Good morning, good morning. How you doing this morning? Oh, there I go. I hear my voice. How y'all doing this morning out there on the airways and the byways? This your host, Val, with the Love and Victory Show with Val. I have Brother Carter in here, and I have this wonderful team. How y'all doing this morning? Brother Carter, copacetic. Copacetic. Mm-hmm. All right. How y'all sound? How y'all doing over on that board this morning? We're doing well this morning, Miss Carter. Is that Kobe? Yes, All right. It let is. me see who else you got in here. Hey, good morning. Oh, who, what? What? I hear a new voice. Who is this voice over here? It's uh, Jacob, the, hey. the new intern. <laughs> hey, everybody. Hey, this is Jacob up here. All right, y'all, get ready for some Jacob. We got something for y'all this morning. And how you doing over there, Miss Heidi? I'm doing good. All righty then. I know I get y'all early in the morning, don't I? Oh, Lord. And where is Miss Abigail? I am right here, just making some adjustments. I'm right, right here. All righty then. We got a full house this morning. We're ready for the show. I'm so excited. I won't talk about what I did last evening. All I did, just know I came crawling up them stairs again. And uh, Jacob had to say, we found the elevator. I know, Jacob, I know. But I never give myself enough time to walk around to get to the elevator. I'm always sliding in here. I guess that's my time for the cardio. So good morning, good morning, good morning. Brother Carter. Talk to me. Did you rest last night? Nope. What was you doing last night? Was it a game on? Mm -mm. What was you doing? We're living in restless times. You know what? It's it's so true. I went to the store last night to run into CVS, and it was a mom and a son in there, and um, the mom was looking for something to sleep. And so she just said, kept saying, I can't sleep. I can't sleep. And I wasn't in their business, but I overheard it because I'm I'm suffering with this insomnia too. And so she said, my son has been up for like four days. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he was standing there. At first, I thought it was her husband because he did kind of look a little older. Mm -hmm. And so I said, well, I'm sorry. I said, well, what's going on with you? You know me, Lawrence. I'm always engaging with somebody. And so he just got to talking about his life wasn't great and Mm -hmm. he might as well be gone. And just it was really sad. So finally, I said to him, I said, well, son, how old are you? He said, I'm 25. Mm-hmm. He said, my life is over. I said, no, son, your life is just beginning. Mm. And he said, well, I may, I don't live life more than most people. I said, no, not at 25. Mm-hmm. I said, mm-hmm. all I can tell you, baby, um, tomorrow is going to be better than today. Just mm-hmm. hold on in there. And so his mom said, I thank you for telling me. He said, but he don't get it. He seemed to think that his life is over. Wow. And I'm, I don't know why I'm telling y'all this here, but, mm-hmm. uh, you know, sometimes you have to just take a moment. You never know why God places people in your life at that particular time. Mm-hmm. So I engaged with him before I got ready to walk off. I know COVID and everything else is real. He asked me, can I have a hug? Mm-hmm. And I gave him a hug. And it didn't just make him feel good. It made me feel good. So mm-hmm. the moral of the story is just take time. When you can put a smile on somebody's face, put a smile on their face. So mm-hmm. with that and being you just you just talk to people and put a smile on their face. Well, sometimes you, you just have to meet a person where they're at. Mm-hmm. You know, just take some time to just engage. Mm-hmm. Be be present in what the Lord have gone. Just be present. I mean, I'm not saying everybody, mm-hmm. but just be present. So I felt good about it. Okay. Uh, and I think he did You're too. You're trying to bring uh, me into presence right now. Because... There you go, Brother Carter. I'm gonna talk to you too. <laughs> you a little sleepy? Ah, uh, keep on going. Keep on going. Oh, I'm trying you know to get what? There. You know what? I'm there. not. I'm not. You need to understand. Why can't you celebrate on somebody else feeling better? Yeah, I do. Okay then. All right. Well, brother Carter need a smile this morning. Can y'all give him a smile? That's what we want to hear. Give him a smile this yeah, morning. Let me give myself. To give him a smile. All righty. I know we got y'all ready this morning, didn't we? Thank you for that smile and go get it. Two of my favorite songs. That's a way to wake up in the morning. All righty then. But before we go any further, we are t- right there at the top for the scripture and prayer. And we just go and get this word now. Come on, Brother Carter. What you got for him? All right. <clears throat> scripture going to come from the book of Psalms, 37th number of Psalms. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and withered as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. 
so shall thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of your heart. Something happened here. Commit thy ways unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. It was too loud. It was too loud. Keep going, baby. That's been the reading of the book of Psalms 20, uh, 37, number of Psalms, verse 1 through 5. May the Lord have blessing to the healers and doers of his word. You ready to give us a prayer? Uh, to learn in your hand. Dear Heavenly Father, most gracious God, we just thank you. We thank you, O oh Heavenly Father, for this morning, O oh Heavenly Father. We thank you for just giving us the opportunity to just praise your name. We thank you, O oh Heavenly Father, for the listeners. Heavenly Father and the viewers, we thank you for those that are on their way coming in. We thank you, Heavenly Father. I thank you for this amazing team that you have blessed me with. I thank you for Raise the Praise 100. And most of all, Heavenly Father, I thank you for my soulmate, my partner, Brother Carter. This morning, I pray that we give you something that you can just uh, gnaw on, think about, and be blessed uh, and that will carry you the rest of the week. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. All, All right. God bless you. All righty. What y'all got for, what y'all got going on? I know it's a little hot in here this morning. I'm ready for this air to kick in. Oh, Lord, I don't know why. Why is it so hot? Well, uh, somebody is requesting some music over here. I think it's Brother Vernon. He said, I would like to hear a request, Love Theory by Kirk Franklin. I think we can do that. I think we can do that for him. We're going to give it, since he came straight up early this morning, we give him that song, and then I'm going to come back with the thought of the day, and then we're going to get going all the way through the show. Uh, brother Carter, you got to, you're going to give a shout-out to uh, old Brother uh, Vernon over here. Morning, BH. Good morning to you, huh? Yeah. All righty. He just said. Send a good morning to him on the line. Yeah, there. we did. Well, I'm going to go ahead and give this uh, my thought of the day. And then we're just going to go ahead and let the team do what they do. Attract what you expect. Reflect what you desire. Become what you expect. And mirror what you admire. I'm going to say it one more time. Attract what you expect. Reflect what you desire. Become what you expect mirror what you admire think about that uh and it always just in my opinion i think it just sums up what you put into life is what you're gonna get out how you speak how you live what you do just how you treat people that's what you're gonna get out of life all righty then i think that's, that's all, what you got that's what i got what you got all out right. of it all right say it again Oh, God, Brother Carter, I tell you. Y'all, we're going to pray for Brother Carter this morning. He's having a moment this morning. I don't know if those that know him, he don't do well when it's hot. Um, and it is extremely warm in here this morning. And um, he he's a cool brother. He loves blue. And so his coolness is not working. So uh, we're going to have to We put a fan over there for him. We're going to try to get some of this coolness to come back in because uh, y'all see him sipping on coffee. Y'all hear him sipping on coffee. We're doing everything to get him going. But uh, attract what you expect. Attract what you expect. Reflect what you desire. Stop on that. Attract what you attract what what you expect. You attract say? what you expect. In so, sense. in other words, what you how you walk in the room? If you if I'm expecting to have a good day, I'm going to. When I come in, I'm coming in. I'm coming in looking You're gonna for bring the good day. I'm gonna bring the good day, and I'm going to look at for. Some, I'm gonna look for something positive in the room. Okay. Okay. So I'm not. If I see somebody sitting in the corner with they poochy mouth on, then you ain't gonna be around. Oh no. Okay. No, you know what the second one say? The second one says, "Reflect what you desire." So mm -hmm. I desire to feel like a million dollars, mm -hmm. look like a million dollars. Mm -hmm. To become a millionaire. Okay. So I'm going to walk in it. So you're gonna reflect. Work, you're going to reflect as though you already I'm have already there. obtained the million. There you go. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Become what you expect. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I don't reflect it. Uh -huh. Like you said, I'm walking in it. Mm -hmm. 
Y'all just see, y'all gonna start seeing a new glory. Just a whole new me. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then mirror what you do, admire. So mm-hmm. I want to be around some of the people that's doing all right. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to, I want to, if, if, if I want to be a good radio host. If you want to smile. I'm going to be around. You're going to look at somebody and you want to smile. You want to look at somebody that's smiling back at you. You want a mirror. Yeah. And reflect what you see. I want to look at see. somebody that's frowning. All right. All right. Well, you better look at the Abigail then. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't. There you go. They're going to smile. All righty, then. So now, what we, y'all think about that out there in the uh, radio land? What you think about Vernon, that? Uh, what you think about Mr. that, Mr. Vernon? Can you help me with Brother Carter over here? Send me a little comment over here. Throw me some help in the way through the airwaves. Yeah. All righty, then. Give me a shout out to three four six three five five zero one hundred. That's three four six three five five zero one hundred. Glad to hear from you. All righty, then. All right, is it? What is the time for now? What are we up to? introduce the title of the show and the title of the show is what what is the title of the show when you keep your what when when to keep your mouth shut shut Shut. Mm -hmm. i'm gonna say that one more time when i'm already i'm already it didn't say when to shut up it said when to keep your mouth shut that's right Mm -hmm. you already walking in it huh (laughs) all righty then you know it's gonna be a how long you gonna do that brother carter Mm. I don't know what to do with him. Maybe they hear. It. Okay. All righty then. That's the title of the show. When mm-hmm. to keep your mouth shut. But mm-hmm. well, we have some great guests coming on, as always. We have two phenomenal women that are going to be on. Um, mm-hmm. we, uh, I think the last week we had two. Now, when is a good time to keep your mouth shut? What you it's mean? not when you're on the airway on a live. Sh- I say, when is a good time to keep your mouth shut? When you. I, not on the airway, guys. A good time to keep <laughs> no, you. A I good time to keep your mouth shut is when you're not going to say something positive about someone. I agree. With okay, you. that's one. No, it's okay. not constructive or positive. Yeah. If you don't have, if you don't have anything good to pour in, mm-hmm. just close your mouth. Okay, it's a good time to keep your mouth shut. It's a good time to keep your mouth mm-hmm. shut. Abigail, what's another uh, time to keep your mouth shut? Um, you know, I was that kid growing up where I always got too much talking on my report card. Mm-hmm. So I was told all the time that I need to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, as I've matured and grown over the years, you know, you kind of do have to read the situation. And when you feel like, especially with like when you're like arguing with someone and it's just stagnant, like you're not getting anywhere. Mm-hmm. You're not getting, especially in arguments with people mm-hmm. you love. Sometimes I definitely need to learn to uh, just keep doesn't need to shut. be said. Just you know? keep your mouth shut. Just keep my mouth shut. Well, well, let me ask a question on that. When you're arguing with some, well, when you're arguing, per, period. But when you are having a conversation with someone you care about and that conversation is going to the left, I don't necessarily know you need to keep your mouth shut, but then you need to find a positive way to communicate because both of you all probably have a good point that you need to get out, Mm -hmm. but the communication is where the problem is coming in. It's how you're trying to get it out. Mm -hmm. So I think that everybody should have a voice in a situation, but it's finding the right. Good time to keep your mouth shut. It's when when you find you in a conversation with someone and no understanding is taking place. You know that that person is not trying to understand and they simply trying to be understood. It's a good time to keep your mouth shut. Mm-hmm. I agree. Okay. Well, I'm going to keep going. We'll keep going because we ain't, uh, this ain't no dispute with me and you right no, now. No, 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 no. I'm saying that I'm going to keep going uh, with that, mm-hmm. meaning that I have to agree with you on that because it don't make no sense to keep arguing. Yeah. And uh, somebody else have their point, and they're not going to listen. Everybody had good points. Yeah, that was, that was a good one. Jacob, mm-hmm. what about you? Uh, what's the old saying? God gives us two ears and one mouth for a <laughs> reason. Jacob, I got uh-huh. this hot coffee in this white shirt. Really, you gonna say well, that? Well, right maybe now? I should have kept my mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Go ahead, finish your finish what you were saying. <laughs> no, I mean when you're talking, it's impossible to listen to other people. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And especially when you're speaking with someone with more experience who's been around a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I don't like to pretend that I know as much as that person. Okay. You don't even want to pretend it. I like that. That's wisdom. God gave us two ears and one mouth. Ooh. So he must want us to listen more than talk. Absolutely. Ooh. Right. Okay. What about right. you, Heidi? That's you don't some, want to say nothing to you. There. Come on, Heidi. Come on, Quiet Come on. Storm. Look at that. That is a What's quiet... a good time to keep your mouth shut? Um, I think when you don't really know what you're talking about is a good time to keep your mouth shut. Because like in an argument, I mean, just to kind of stray away from causing a bigger argument. So everybody's reflecting on the argument, so to speak, huh? Yes. Okay. Well, that's all right. What about you, Kobe? <laughs> Mine pretty much reflects on the argument because when me, Abigail, Heidi, when we were first coming up with this, the first thing I thought of is learn to keep your mouth shut because if you're full of emotion and, you, and you're thinking about saying things to hurt the other person, that's best to keep your mouth shut. Okay, then. I like uh, that. Very good points. All righty, then. So, Brother Carter, what do you think about that? You think they gave us some good points on yeah, here? Yeah, hell yeah. So, the moral of this story is just be quiet if you don't have anything positive to put into a situation. Mm -hmm. All righty. Well, we're at the top, and it's time for us to go with what? What we're going with? What you doing over there on that board? Y'all tell me. I think I think we gave them some good songs. I think we need to give them a, uh, you have a riddle for us? Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, let's give them a riddle. a riddle. Let's give them a riddle, and then we're going to go with, because we're already at the 730 hour. Yes, ma'am. Trust me, we're just dragging right now, but we're going to kick this thing in gear pretty soon. <laughs> I don't so y'all just, just bear with us for a moment. Okay, <laughs> so the first riddle of the day. No one has ever walked this way. Which way is it? Oh. No one has ever walked this way. Which way is it? The right way. No. No. <laughs> okay. Okay. A lot of people walk the right way. All right. So uh, say it again. No one has ever walked this way. Which way is it? Y'all can tell us in give, the comments. Tell us if you know the answer. Us, y'all didn't give us the answers. They, they, see how they doing us, Brother Carter? We used to have. <laughs> I have the answers. I'm uh, holding them hostage. Uh -huh. <laughs> no one has ever walked this way. Mm -hmm. Which way is it? Which way is it? Oh, no one has ever walked you can't, this you can't way. walk this way. Oh, Lord. What you say, Jacob? He I knows, know the answer. He know the answer. He know the answer. I do. He helped put it together. Did you? No, I actually didn't. He didn't. Okay, but I, I can. But I've I've been peeking. You have. Yeah. Well, Jacob, we right here. We are. We right here. I'm Jake. trapped now. You're trapped. You're trapped. <laughs> I can't even stand up. Oh God! You see what we got over here? I love it, Jacob. You're not gonna even help me. I, 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 I can. Monday help. morning is coming. Um, I can help. Throw can me a hint. Okay. Uh, this might be a real giveaway, but that's okay. Give me a hint. Um, Lifeline. So it's October. Halloween's right around the corner. Okay. Ooh, I like uh, where you're going. Kids will be getting these in their trick or treat bags and candy. Bucket. Yes, but it specific. Is. Okay, listen, to, listen to the riddle. Yes. No one has ever walked this way. Which way is it? I like that, Jacob. I well, I ain't play. I don't eat candy, so. You don't eat candy? <laughs> no. Brother Carter, addicted. what is that? Vernon, help. Come on, Vernon. Yo oh, Gabba, God. Gabba, Yo, Gabba, 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 somebody help. Okay, we're going to come back. So, I know there's others that haven't logged in that's out there. Some... Yeah, y'all need to go and get an answer to that one. Yeah, because that's over my head. Yeah. Can I say the other riddle? Mm hmm. I think you're going to like this one. Okay. What does no one want, but they don't want to lose? No <laughs> one wants, but they don't want to lose. Where y'all get these answers, these questions from? <laughs> They're supposed to be tricky. Nobody wants it, but they yeah. don't want to lose it. I can give you a hint, Miss Carter. Okay. We, we got to do our disclaimers because... Oh, sued. Yeah, you don't okay. want lawsuit. <laughs> lawsuit. Okay, I won. Okay, got you. Okay, there you go. Okay, then. I got one. All right, now, oh, Lord, let me leave them riddles alone. Y'all can start at that best. Uh, them browns, I tell you, they have them riddles, and I'm just stuck with them, and they not got nerve enough not to be on here this morning helping out. All righty, then. Where are we at now? It's time for the thought of the day. No, I did the thought of the day. Heard it through the grapevine. Ooh, okay. Okay, you got something for us first? Okay. 
Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowances made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, education, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. All righty then. Did y'all hear that? And that is the Love and Victory Show with Val. Copyright protection. That's All right. righty. We have the protection of the Raise the Praise 100. And we have to take it even further and make sure that we are protecting ourselves and everything that comes around across this airway. Mm. Thank you so much, yes, Jacob. Yes, ma'am. Right. So the first story for Through the Grapevine, we got this story from CNN and the New York Post. A tenured fast food employee was fired without notice. So an individual named Dennis Peake was working at the Wendy's in Stanley, North Carolina. He was working there for almost 20 years. He worked as like a greeter. He helped kind of clean up the lobby and stuff like that. He was working there for uh, two decades. And he lived with his caregiver, his sister, Kona Turner. And uh, one day uh, she was trying to take him to work and uh, she found out he was fired and without notice, without reason or anything oh, like wow. that. Um, and uh, so Dennis Peak actually has Down syndrome. Oh. And so it appeared, you know, from every perspective, pretty much that he was fired because, you know, because of his disability. disability. The mm. manager even said, quote, that he couldn't do his job like a normal person. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Was very, very just nasty and mean. You know, um, y'all know it's personal for me, right? Yes. So um, one of the things that I really struggle with is one thing when there's injustice for anybody, but definitely injustice for people with disability. That, to me, if you hired him, if you brought him on and you say that I want to help and I want to give back and then to uh, abuse or misuse and mm -hmm. then turn around and fire, it's, to me, uh, it... Baby, they can hear you on the oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they That's just... Un I mean, it just it just makes me angry. Yeah. And so the fact that they did that to him, not only should they fire the manager, but I think it should, something should come from the top, making it very clear about their expectations when treating people with disability or any employee, treating them wrong. So yeah. That's my personal opinion on that. That's yeah. just wrong. They offered to um they offered to give him his job back, but he's he was uh, a little bit older. I think he was in his fifties. And yeah. so he uh, he opted out to just retire early. Yeah. So the community actually that he <clears throat> is from is trying to throw him a, a retirement party. Oh wow. So he doesn't have to go back to yeah. so he's clearly so not like compensation. How could you with how yeah exactly so how can you expect him to go back back i wouldn't i wouldn't want one of my loved ones to go back after being treated that way but i that manager definitely needs to be fired oh for sure this was a a great story for right? sure mm -hmm. yeah and then so for the other story we have something a little more uh, i don't know if i'd say lighthearted, but a little more on the fun side okay. so <laughs> last week we talked about um kanye west's with wearing light li white lives matter to his um to his fashion show yeah it was kind mm -hmm. of the main focus of it so alongside him was candace owens okay. who is a controversial con uh, conservative she um, mm -hmm. she's an african-american woman who mm -hmm. kind of speaks against a lot of uh black issues so yes. a lot of people just kind of see her as controversial mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. she actually released an old voicemail of kim kardashian she's kind of getting her allegiance with uh with kanye like really out there right now mm -hmm. she released an old um voicemail of kim kardashian to her ex-boyfriend ray j um and it was just kind of just really mean and nasty she didn't really say anything too too controversial um everything that people are kind of talking about is uh she said uh, uh to her boyfriend quote honestly go have fun with old hag whitney houston she's so sick crack is definitely not whack with you guys you are just honestly it makes me laugh how disgusting you guys look and then she started like screaming at the end of it oh Kim did that. Kim, yeah. You when know, she was dating, or this was after her and Ray J broke up. I think I heard something where it was in the middle of the time when, when she, she brought Whitney Houston up in. Yeah, yeah, talking talking mess about you Whitney know, Houston. Wasn't it, and I think wasn't that was during the time when she was just 
gotten married to the football player or something. Uh, you remember that? Wasn't it something like around that time? So why was she worried about what Ray J was doing? Yeah. If, and then for her to put them off on Whitney. Come on, Kim. And you I know. don't like the shaming other women yes. thing. And I think the Kardashians are really known for that, like yeah. shaming other women for the sake of a man. Yes. And yes. it's like, you don't got to bring Whitney into well, it. You can be mad at your man all you want. Well, actually, I guess I'm kind of confused because she was with, what was that guy's name? The football player. You remember his name? Yeah, I think his name was Chris Humphrey. Yes. She was married yeah, he with played, him. like baseball or something, I football, think. Football, I think. Was it football? Yes. And so I think, why was she worried about No, her? it was the running back, I believe. Yeah, it was football. Yeah. That's his name. No, it, it was, no, it wasn't him. It was, this is when she was married. She didn't marry the other. She married Chris Humphrey. That was his name. Oh, yeah. Ray, or no, not Ray J. Someone else was on the Saints. I know you're talking about yes. I saw it on the Kardashians. Yes. So yeah. why? Yeah, he can do the Wendy's commercials. Yo, Gabba Gabba said, uh. He uh, he was in the Reggie New Orleans What's his Saints name? team. Okay, Reggie Bush. Reggie Bush. Bush. Yeah. Bush. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, but I was talking about. I personally think this was during the time she was not even with Ray J. So why is she worried about who he was with? But that's them Kardashians. They got some real issues, and that's why they're all over the news right now. Just a good mm-hmm. story. God good bless them. They need help. All righty then. That was really good. All right, then what else y'all got? Look at your Gabba Gabba. Your Gabba Gabba got a whole bunch to say. <laughs> Chris is on the basketball team. Okay, thanks for correcting me. Uh, and That's Chris Thomas then. No, it was Chris... Chris Hum- Humphrey. Chris Humphrey. <laughs> Humphrey. It was Chris Humphrey. Me and Ms. Carter don't know sports, obviously. Yeah. Okay, look look at Jacob. <laughs> Jacob knows sports. Yes, uh, he played in the NBA for the Utah Jazz, Toronto Raptors, Dallas Mavericks the nets and the celtics and on and on and on and so on and on see, he was a journeyman yes and see he ended up he said you know what i didn't she uh oh, he, sleep with chris thomas also played with cleveland no baby that's uh oh, where's that disclaimer can we play that disclaimer again <laughs> hurry up y'all play it. new way media takes no responsibility for the opinions or the statements made by the host or their guests statements or show topics or not the necessary belief of the radio station. Street 100 and Heat are raised to praise 100 Houston. It is not our intention to label, discriminate, or ignore anyone. This radio station takes no responsibility for the opinions of others on the airways. I love it. I love it. You know what? Brother Carter is in the house now. Appreciate y'all helping to raise the praise out. See, <laughs> you never know what we go going to get over here. I love this. Okay, then. Wow. It's almost time for our guests to get in here, but I think we have something else. Is that all y'all have from? But I know I want some music. We have our acronym? Well, we're going to do that at the okay. top. Mm-hmm. But I want some music. Give me something good. Give me some fire. I was. I was actually finishing up my master's um, in clinical mental health counseling. um, And then I needed to take the um, national licensure exam, um, which I did and I passed. Thank the Lord. Um, Wait, wait. Can we get some claps on that? She passed. Give us something, y'all. Y'all. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Give us something. Y'all don't even know what she came through. You, well, right, there you go. Congratulations. congratulations. You. Keep going, darling. So um, I'll actually be practicing here in Texas um, yes. probably next month. I'm just waiting for everything to go through. And oh, God. I'll be in private practice here. No, you will mm-hmm. be practicing here. So yes. the license is here. Yes. And you can then go wherever you want to go, but Pretty you're going to be here. Yes, I will Okay, because yeah. you haven't gotten permission. To, to leave. Here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, then. And then we have Miss Tiffany Washington. Tell people a little bit about you, and then we're going to get started over here and, and kick this show off. Who are you, girl? Why do I love you? Yes, ma'am. So I am Tiffany Washington, and I am from Little Rock, Arkansas. Um, I currently am a director over billing at a pathology lab, and I am a mother of two. There you go. All righty then. <laughs> That's the simple version, huh? That's the simple version of who <laughs> yes, you are. Yes. Do you know when to, do the you light know, version? Do you know when to keep your mouth shut, or are you learning to do that? I think I know when. Okay. Okay. Well, all I'm going to say is uh, we're going to do this. Are we at the top? No, No, we still got a little more time. We're going to talk about, we have an event that's coming up for our nonprofit. I don't talk enough, and Brother Carter is always getting on me about this. LNV Enterprise Resources, Inc. 
is a nonprofit servicing people with disabilities. And that's why it, it really touched my heart when you shared the story earlier about what was going on. We really try and do what we can do. Uh, and if all of us out here mm -hmm. can do what we can do to help people with disabilities that are less fortunate, mm -hmm. uh, I think the world would be a better place. So December, you know, I think this will be our second big event we've had this year. December 1st, December 1st. we will be having a gala. Okay. Uh, and this gala is going to be where we're going to have people with disabilities. We're adopting families. They will come in, dress up. Uh, they will have fine a fine dinner, a, a very beautiful event, a hall that uh, will have gifts. We will even have Santa. We're going to have music here. Or we're going to have gifts there. So we're really trying to do something special. Um uh, I think a lot of times people forget where much is given, much is required. God continues to pour into us so that we can, not just for us to keep for ourselves, so that we can give back and help to help someone else. Mm -hmm. So on LV with Val, there is a donate button. Please, please, so that we can keep doing these things that are magical and, and transferring uh that's changing people's lives out there. Mm -hmm. Please go and donate. I mean, there is no amount that's too small, definitely not too big. So just go donate, and you can do that all the time. We're accepting. It's a 5013C, so it is something that you can get your, uh, at the end of the year, our a CPA will send you your uh, information. Just make sure you put your email address in there, and you will be able to use it as a tax write-off. Mm -hmm. So please, 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 for us and for those that are in need, uh, a nonprofit cannot function without donations. So mm -hmm. please uh, go out there and donate. That's www.lverinc.com, www.lverinc.com. Also today, oh, I think it's mm -hmm. November 19th, Raise the Praise is having a... Uh, uh, radio. Radiothon. Mm -hmm. So we'll be giving you guys more information on that, which is also a nonprofit. But again, just know that we are trying to do things to change people's lives and to help. And while we're changing other people's lives, they're changing our lives all for the better. Mm -hmm. All righty then. So if you're blessed, be a blessing. Be a blessing. Be <laughs> a blessing. All right, you got anything to say on that, <laughs> Tiffany or Stephanie? I would say donate do what you can do do your part um it's a blessing for us all to be in the predicament that we are in even the small things of just having breath in our body we take that for granted every day yes. so if you have something that you can give or you feel god has put something on your heart then give it it's better to give than to receive and you can't be god given you show okay well you know one of the things the reason why i kind of went to you uh this young lady is so phenomenal. She Every time I look up, she's either doing some type of missionary work. She's from, she think I don't be watching. I've been checking for my daughter. Uh, she was just out of the country not too long ago. Yeah, Let's Honduras. talk about that. You were in Honduras. What was that experience like? Oh my goodness, it was amazing. So um, I go with Freedom Crusades. I've been on two mission trips with them, and we'll be going back to Honduras next year. Mm -hmm. um, but the signs, miracles, and wonders that I experienced, mm -hmm. um, can I just share yeah, one? I really, want you to truly really share. briefly no share um so <laughs> we go into um it's a very impoverished country mm -hmm. um and so we have these uh big crusades and people come and they're anticipating that god is they're going to encounter god in a powerful way and he's going to change their lives mm -hmm. and so i remember um it was a, a lady there and um she hadn't been able to i didn't i didn't know all of this because the Language barrier. Like I yes. speak a little Spanish. I tried to learn as much Spanish as I could before I went, but the Spanish I learned was more prestigious. Yeah. And so <laughs> and it just did not add up. It didn't correlate. <laughs> um, and so she had just kept pointing to her eye and she's saying like, grabbing my hand, like pray for my eye. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, okay, can I pray for you? She's like, yes, please. So I pray for her eye. Um, and she hadn't been able to open her eye. I think it was like 12 years. Mm. Um, it was her left eye. And so um, it had just been shut. Uh, from like an accident. So I prayed one time and I said, test it out. How is it? You know, uh, cause I know Jesus prayed twice for the blind man. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. He said, I see people walking around his trees and the Lord prayed again. And mm -hmm. then his vision was restored. Mm -hmm. So I said, can I pray one more time? And she said, yes, please, see, 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 see. Yeah. So I prayed one more time and she said, oh, and it started to water, which was something she She'd hadn't never had. had. And we saw it. I said, can I pray one more time? <laughs> 
<laughs> and she said, yes, yes, yes. I prayed again and it started to open up and it was all gray. I said, can I pray again? She said, yes, yes, yes. And she was jumping up and down. C, C, Yes. <laughs> I prayed again. We watched. We watched her eye go from gray to white. No way. And the black, is it the retina? Yeah. Be, or the, pupil the pupil begin to form in her eye. She starts screaming and crying. She goes and finds someone who can translate. And she says she had an accident 11 years ago. She hadn't been able, her eye has been shut, sealed shut. She hadn't been able to see. And they got her on stage and they said, what are you seeing? And she said, I can see like shapes. I can see people. And so we just believed the Lord for her full wow. healing. Um, but we saw deaf ears open. We saw limbs grow back. We saw people who were paralyzed. I actually saw a man who had been paralyzed his whole life get out of his wheelchair and begin to walk. The wow. hunger for the Lord oh was something God. that I had never experienced and he showed up. Oh my God. Wow. You know, this is why when I tell y'all this young lady is amazing. Uh, she doesn't even know how much I pray for her and mm -hmm. how much I am uh, watching her. Uh, I like to use the words vicariously, but no intentionally. Mm -hmm. I keep my eye on you. Um, because you are such an amazing young lady. Uh, and you guys are, will get to know her uh, more in this conversation, but she is um, someone that truly loves God, mm -hmm. but she loves God's people. And, you know, we always think that because you're walking with the, with God or you're, you're a Christian, you have to be this upright, perfect person. And you have to be this, uh, Big hat, y'all know what I feel about the big hats, mm -hmm. and I call the fakies. You have to be the big hat person, or uh, you have to look a certain way. Mm -hmm. uh, this young it's lady, it's not about all of that. It's oh, not about all no. that, and that is also Tiffany. So that's why I really, Tiffany was hoping to be here today because I told mm -hmm. Tiffany this is someone that I definitely wanted her to meet because mm -hmm. you guys have so much in common. Mm -hmm. So uh, I can't wait to have this conversation. We got two minutes before the show starts. I want you to go ahead and do the acronym and then we'll start well, this. Let's, let's reflect a little bit on Miss Stephanie a little bit if we move. Okay, we can. Go know, ahead. Yes. You have to reflect oh on, on, on true faith yes. when you see it. You I know? agree. And I too so many, much. too I many agree. of us walk around with this, 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 uh, thank you. Fake, fake, fake. Yes. You know, uh, surface you. faith. Look, you're talking about some true faith when you thank you, baby. Seeing people's eyes open, yes. seeing limbs, man. This yes. is this is true faith, and it don't come in with a big hat on and a suit and none of that on. It just comes with just believing. Yeah. And too many of us Christians, and I say us Christians, mm -hmm. I put us all together, uh -huh. know how to talk to talk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but don't know how to really truly believe yeah. what we're really reading and, and understanding in the Bible. And, talking and, so, about, yeah. and this is some, it's, it's refreshing to see someone that's truly just, just, just living it and, and believing it. And so, Love we love so you. Much. We love you too. <laughs> <laughs> no, we love you. And uh, I'm just so proud of you. Oh, keep you. doing, keep letting them use you mm -hmm. and don't let anybody take you off your path. Even if they don't right, I feel like going to church now. I know. I'm going to cry <laughs> these lashes off oh, here in a minute. Uh -huh. Okay, well, we're going to do this acronym, and we're going to get this show going. Come on in here, Mr. Jacob. What you got for us? All right, this morning's acronym <clears throat> is QUIET. Q-U-I-E-T. Q, -U -I -E -T. Q quintessential. Hmm. Representing the most perfect example of quality. You, unimpeachable, beyond doubt. I, idyllic, peaceful, tranquil. E is earnest. Huh. Resulting from or showing sincere and intense conviction. T is for thoughtful, considerate of others and of self. Huh. Mm -hmm. huh. Well, I think that was well said. Uh, do y'all understand? What he was just saying. I know oh, he used some some big words in there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jacob, I'm gonna ask you uh, to break down in your words the cue. The cue, and you know what? When I'm looking at these words, 
uh, there's there's one word that comes to mind for each and every one, uh-huh. and it's authentic. Okay. And it's being your true self. Uh-huh. Uh, a lot of times, I know, especially for people like me starting a new job, uh-huh. uh, it's very easy to try and, okay, what are they looking for? Yes. And you try to fit your peg into this hole. Mm. And a, a lot of times that comes off as it's phony and fake. people can see it right away. Yes. And confidence is not really, it's, to me, it's not real. That's how people portray you. It's mm-hmm. like that person seems confident, confident but that's mm-hmm. not really doing something for you. So as long as you're being who you are, mm-hmm. comfortable with who you are, that's going to come off as confident. It's okay. not something like, I need to be more confident today. Come on, you just need to be you. Come on now. Come on. Preach, preacher. Come on. That's good. <laughs> do, do, do y'all see the fire that the Love and Victory Show have? You see this team? Maybe you, we haven't even got down in it yet. Y'all, just get ready. Just get ready. Anybody else have anything to say about those? Well, we're just going to take this show and we're going to go. Ahead. Tiffany, why are you leaning in? What you got to say? Okay, she's ready. Look huh? at you, Tiffany. You ready this morning? Can I hear yes, you? Yes, ma'am. I'm ready. Oh, okay, then. Uh, well, we're going to go ahead and get this start. This party started. And uh, I'm going to ask, uh, start with in the house. I'm going to ask Miss Stephanie to tell the people a little bit more about you. Mm-hmm. Tell them about you. Just give me your full name, where you're from, and how did you get here? Yes. So my name is Stephanie. I go by Stephanie Alexis on social media platforms. Um, you say Alexis. 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 Okay. <laughs> but I kind of like Alexis. Alexis. <laughs> Alexis. Um, and so I actually just my whole page and my niche is all about mental health. Mm-hmm. Um, I consider myself a mental health professional and advocate. Um, I believe that. Um, People should live happy, whole, healthy lives. Um, They should create the life that they want, and they can do that um, with a little assistance every now and again and people that come alongside them and want to love them through any challenges that they may have. Um, And I'm just excited to be here. Okay. Yes. I know that's right. Okay, Miss Tiffany, can you tell the people who you are and a little bit about you, other than the fact that you are in Little Rock, Arkansas, and you're a director? Who are you as a person? Uh, okay, <laughs> that's a hard question. Uh, it is. Oh, sound like you're on the interview again. <laughs> I, I guess. Uh, again, well, I am Tiffany Washington. Um, I, I can say I definitely have a love for people. Um, I have a love for God's people, and I am happy to be here today. Okay, then I think I think having you say that I am I have a love for God's people and for people. I would agree 100%. Uh, her soul is just so pure. So today's show, we just supposed to jump her in. Her soul it. says yes. Her oh soul God. says yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay, give it to look. And, and you know. Oh, come on, come on. Did y'all hear that song just over there? Did y'all hear that voice? Y'all in for a treat. She going to give us a little bit. You want to take us? No. Stephanie, you in the no. right no. moment at the right. Up. Wait, it's let me ask you. You're in the right moment at the right time yes. in mental health because it's. That's a, that's much needed today for yes. the people in society. Yes. I mean, the whole nation look like it's just gone mad. It's a wounded world. It's a yeah. wounded world. Yeah. Well, can you, before we take this show, <laughs> I need a little bit. Give me, I need a little of that voice. Give me a little, just a little bit. Whatever the Lord leads you to do right now. This, I'm the host. I know I'm going off script, but that's what I want. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice to worship you. Oh, my soul, rejoice. Take joy, my King, in what you hear. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, y'all see y'all. Do y'all see what we get ready to do up in here this morning? Yes, he is in the shit. house. <laughs> he is in the house. Okay, all right, y'all. Let me just go and start this thing out. Oh, what happened? Somebody, I was you, you was. Uh, that's what you got to do. Go on ahead and do that. Welcome to the Love and Victory Show with Val, where we will bring.
we are back. And I tell you, they just cut me and they said, <laughs> let's go because they ready to get this show started. All righty, then we are back. You see how they cut me off, Tiffany? They cut me and you off. And Ain't me nobody off. cut you off. Good morning, good morning, good morning. And welcome to the Love and Victory Show with Val. <laughs> Well, how are you feeling this morning? I am excited. <clears throat> Can't y'all tell? I am mm -hmm. just on such a high. Mm -hmm. I am on such a high, baby. Y'all going to have to keep me grounded. All I'm right. You on like a, a high, high or a natural high? What kind of high you on? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Brother Carter, it will come from you. Well, I'm on a natural high. All right. I'm all on right. a natural high. Uh, I just feel good. Okay. And so we're going to go with this here and we finna get started. I know, Tiffany, just keep your head up. Ain't no telling. <laughs> she want me to die and laugh. You know? okay. You're telling people what kind of high you are now. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Lord Jesus, help us. Okay. I'm just going to throw this question out here and I'm going to throw it in the studio and out the studio and whoever want to take it first, whether it's Tiffany or. Um, Stephanie, y'all just go with it. Mm. Can keeping your mouth shut be a mental, mentally harmful for someone? Can keeping your mouth shut be mentally harmful for someone? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. no, I think so. I, go ahead. I do I, I, I say, who wanted? Whoever just go. Huh? I was just gonna say. I think absolutely. There, I, I tell people suppressing. Mm -hmm. Your emotions and your feelings are a sure way to carry it everywhere around with you. Ooh. So I think that there is a time that, you know, silence is best and it's going to speak louder than anything that you could say verbally. But um, in the same regard, I think that there are some times when we need to speak up um, and we have to assert ourselves and stand up for ourselves and vocalize our feelings and opinions. OK, what about you, Tiffany? Um, yes, I was just going to, I was essentially going to say the same thing. Yes, that um, I feel like it's harmful um, to keep things in that you need to release. Um, releasing is um, also a way to heal. So keeping those things bottled up, I feel like are very dangerous for you. You know, a lot of times we keep, uh, we say, oh, I don't want to talk about it because I don't want to hurt their feelings mm -hmm. or you're being so mindful of not sticking out or not having someone be mad at you, but at the, at the detriment of yourself. Oh, for sure. Uh, so speaking to you, Miss Stephanie, since you are the professional <laughs> that deal with the mental health. Mm -hmm. uh, She's I, the licensed she, professional. And not the unlicensed, because y'all you're going to have to battle. That's why y'all sitting together. Mm -hmm. Licensed versus unlicensed. We're going to see how that's going to go. <laughs> Almost licensed. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Closer than him. <laughs> we'll see how that's going to go. Mm -hmm. So... I'm going to ask you when sitting in a situation where you know that you are holding back on um, <clears throat> from saying something because you're worried about sticking out with a, like a sore thumb or someone getting upset with you, but you are really feeling bad on the mm -hmm. inside. What's the best way to handle that? Or what would you recommend that person do? Well, I want to say this when sometimes we're trying to keep the peace, mm -hmm. but then keeping that peace outwardly, like we're now in inner chaos and mm. turmoil so we're not at peace while we're trying to please other people mm. um people pleasing pleases everyone but the pleaser mm -hmm. so Speak, i think girl. i think that if you feel like you have to have a conversation with someone but you don't have the courage at that present time to go to them and to talk to them face to face write an email Right. I remember having conversations that were really hard or wanting to with my parents as I had gotten older and, you know, kind of coming to my own. Mm -hmm. And it was conversations that I didn't feel I had the courage or I wasn't comfortable with coming and talking to them face to face. Mm -hmm. I would feel and not even intimidated because my parents weren't receptive, right. but just because of the it's honor parents, that I have. Yes. And those are my parents. Yes. So what I started the to do, you have for them. Absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. I would email them. Yes. Mm -hmm. I would say, Hey, mom and dad, I'm going to send y'all an email tonight mm -hmm. <laughs> about some feelings that I'm having. And then depending on how they felt, we would talk about it. Or my dad would sometimes say, well, would you prefer I email you back? Or, oh. And so I kind of built up the courage and built the rapport in mm -hmm. a different way where I still was able to verbalize how I was feeling so that I didn't, you know, I didn't have that inner chaos and turmoil, but also honor my parents, but honor myself 
when you don't speak, you kind of abandon your own self. Oh, mm-hmm. I think actually, I, I think I like that a lot because uh, <clears throat> not everybody is able to get their their words out because of maybe the fact that they don't want to hurt them. Yeah. Or as soon as they say how they feel, the other person is going to come back with a rebuttal. Absolutely. There is no rebuttal when you're putting it in right. And that was another yes. thing. You can't cut me off. You can't mm-hmm. cut me you off. You can't cut me off. Yeah. Keep reading. Keep read reading. On, read on down to the back. Yes. You, can, you can deal with that afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But you're going to hear what I got to you're say. Mm-hmm. This time. This time. I like that. What about you, Tiffany? What's your, what's your thought on that? I'm sorry, I got so caught up in her answer. Can you ask the question one more time? That was a really that was a really, really good response. If I can just comment on that, I think that's an amazing idea to send someone an email. That way, you know, that way there is no way to be cut off. It really makes mm-hmm. a person really understand and hear you. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's amazing. I really like that idea. I'm, huh, I'm gonna take some of that too. Me too. Uh, <laughs> that's a good way to communicate, yes. especially when you have a a conversation with a controversial uh, yes. individual yeah. and that it might be good may be profitable should i say for you to do it in a text message and or I, email or something i, I agree with you definitely on that end but i also think that sometime uh hearing you say with, with your parents mm-hmm. i think yeah. sometime because of the generational uh mm-hmm. gap that we have yeah. i think that's a great <laughs> way to even help the younger generation and the mm-hmm. older generation. Hey, children, I'm, if y'all out there listening, if it's something you're trying to tell me and I'm not hearing it, send me an email. You know, <laughs> send me a text. Yeah. You know, but uh, you know, because I, what you have to say is important, mm-hmm. and it doesn't have anything. To, I could be just dealing with something mm-hmm. in the moment, yep. and I'm cutting you off because mm-hmm. I'm dealing with something. Mm-hmm. So I like that because yeah. what you have to say is important. Give me time to process. Yeah, let me man. process right. that first. Right. Trying to deal with that right then. Yes. Yeah, right. I'm gonna read you that question again, Tiffany. But we. we well, to, to go back to your original question, uh, oh. can keeping your mouth shut be mentally harmful for someone? someone? Yeah. Sometimes. And uh, I would say definitely yes, mm-hmm. because uh, <clears throat> when you keep your mouth shut certain in certain instances, mm-hmm. you keep that stuff bottled up on the inside of. Mm-hmm. And it's gonna come out eventually, one way or another. <laughs> it's coming out, and so it behooves you to not, what they say, keep your mouth closed on some instances. Yes, mm-hmm. because I think I believe that I'm speaking personally. Yeah, because you you hold good. stuff in, yeah. Brother Carter uh, is one <laughs> that he really is one that just kind of holds things in mm-hmm. uh, I used to be that girl I'm not that girl anymore mm-hmm. he used to, he holds things in because he's always considering the next mm-hmm. person mm-hmm. and I think and I think also mm-hmm. that's just who you were as a person always yeah. y'all just weren't talking well, as well the, the, the scripture reads in 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 Philippians esteem about esteeming others mm-hmm. better than you do yourself mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so, having read that scripture think, so much in my life, you think that that he um, even took I, it out of context? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm saying, okay, I'm saying, okay, I'm saying, that's what people do right yeah. there. He kept that's that's that that's that traditional. Mm-hmm. You look, come on, Stephanie, help me out because you know sometimes yeah. we can take things so literal. Yes, that I we think got it highlighted. See, right there. I wish y'all could Verse see three. this uh, this Bible, <laughs> the uh, the anointing, the pages yes, are yes, beginning yes, to yes, yes, yes. become they, they, they Lazarus. <laughs> <laughs> we are the raising back. <laughs> I'm telling you because he he literally and so that is Philippians chapter two verse three. And it says, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than thyself. And that's a scripture that's just been sitting in my in my presence so long yeah. that I feel like, you know, it's, it's easier for me to esteem you. But I think it says <laughs> something else. See, here, here's, and, and, and I'm what so glad we're said? having this conversation. Mm-hmm. And I know this is off. I know my team is going to be like, well, what? Can you just stay on track? Just stay on track because we're, we're it. talking about mental illness. Right? <laughs> but I do. And that's see... a mental illness yeah. I have. So yeah. help, help me. <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I do think that we are. It, every word that's in this Bible, I believe mm-hmm. with my whole soul. Mm-hmm. But I think that sometimes what we do as Christians, we find a scripture Mm -hmm. and we just hang on that one scripture Mm -hmm. and we say, well, this is why I'm supposed to do it this way. Well, Mm -hmm. I think if you just read on, you know, you'll find 
that God does not also want you to be just abused. And and, and I'm not a absolutely I'm not a theologist. I'm mm-hmm. not I don't I mean I can't break it down yeah, like that. I, I'm either. a theologist also. Okay, but then you I'm would you licensed. should but you I'm not licensed. But, you're not a licensed but, theologist. They are cutting up in here. <laughs> Tiffany, I wish you were in the studio. <laughs> yes, I wish I was too. <laughs> I, do, I do think Lawrence uh, there is a scripture and I can't find it. Somebody mm-hmm. gonna find this for me. Mm-hmm. There is a scripture, and if y'all out there listening, help me out, Brother Vernon. Somebody help me out. There is also something in there about I know it's about esteeming others, mm-hmm. what you just said, mm-hmm. but it's also God is saying something about you. You have to open your because Jesus got mad. I remember he got mad. He got sick and tired of being sick and tired. Listen. And he tore up some things. Listen. So yes. it, mm-hmm. I'm sure at that time, God, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. He was not talking about esteeming anybody. At that point, he did not care. Okay, you, you mm-hmm. understand where I'm going with that? Mm-hmm. Okay, so. You're talking about the table. The people, yeah, so, the table. It, so it wasn't no mm-hmm. esteeming going on at that point. Yeah. Because he had that. He was compassionate. Mm-hmm. You know, he was all that. What you saying? Mm-hmm. I, I know yeah. I took it somewhere yeah, else. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, good, yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, there's a time, Ecclesiastic says, yeah. there's, a time oh, there's a time for everything. Yeah, Under the heavens. But, mm-hmm. but it's, time to have it. but it's, sometimes you have to get made. Yes, but it yeah. doesn't mean that you have to just keep on. No, you don't, mm-hmm. you don't esteem others to the, to the fact that you, but that's what you, you don't exist. But that's full <laughs> transparency. We no, going that's not where I'm at. I didn't say that's where you're at. I'm no. saying sometime you would do that. Mm-hmm. You would do that, that everybody else was more important. Their feelings, what their needs were. I'm just not going to worry about it. It's going to be okay. No, it's not okay. Your feelings matter. That's all I'm saying. Black lives matter? Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> My can't. life matters. Your okay. life matter. Yeah, what do y'all matter. do we got to deal with over here? Y'all ready for this here? It matters. So. Yeah. All right. Now, 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 let, me, let me tell you something. Okay. If you're not the prettiest person in the world. Okay. Well, I, I am. That doesn't apply to me. <laughs> okay, next. And, uh, and, and, and you know, most people that have situations, whether they're not the prettiest person in the world or they're not the oh, yeah, yeah, shapeless get person ready for in this the world, y'all know he going somewhere. They tend to 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 say that you are what they are. Oh. Oh, that yeah. was deep. That y'all know what he said. So, so they call me people ugly. not feeling good about themselves. Yeah. If they are not a very attractive person, mm, the projection. Yeah, they'll, 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 they'll tell you you're not attractive. Yeah. Oh, come on, brother. To Clark. reflect. Now he licensed right now. You come licensed on. to say that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so, so, so when you when your esteem is not at a certain level yes. in life. You tend to want to make somebody else esteem yep. not as high as yours, ah. and so I'm the I'm the kind of person that will say, well, I'm comfortable in my esteem because I'm looking at what this, yeah, <laughs> what who this, this coming from, who, what yeah. this look like, yeah. Uh-huh. So I I don't have a problem with letting you esteem yourself. That's good, you okay, know, Brother but, Carter. Well, y'all, y'all heard, and today he is licensed at this moment and to say, is. and he is. <laughs> he's nothing. on track too, he because is, come let on. me just say this, there is a psychologist, his name is Maslow, he has gone on to be with the Lord, obviously, mm-hmm. but he has a hierarchy of needs, five mm-hmm. basic needs that every human has to possess in order to live a healthy life. Okay. And number four is esteem. Oh. They say you need to have your physiological needs met, then your safety, and then we all need love and belonging, and then mm. we need esteem. Mm. And then we need to, which they say most people don't reach, but self-actualization. Oh, but break esteem down. Is, See, y'all come with all this mm-hmm. old highly educated <laughs> stuff over here. No, we got him over here. Say that, again. Say that word again. What's self-actualization. <laughs> actualization. I actually that's, feel that's like y'all. That's a tongue twister. That's a tongue twister. What? What? <laughs> what? See what they're doing over here. What is that Tiffany, get us uh, get you some of this. What is no that? Else you got to I actually this think thing. that y'all have for sure reached that level. People who are self actualized, they actually don't need other people's approval and permission 
to be who they are. Oh, I, I, you know what? They don't submit to society norms and standards. They they literally live to the beat of their own drum. Oh, yeah, that's wow. her. So someone like <laughs> y'all. <laughs> that's, 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 yeah, that's, 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 that's me too, in a different way. That's me too. <laughs> okay. That is her. Well, let me just tell y'all this here. I'm grateful to God mm-hmm. uh, for deliverance Come on. because I used to worry about mm-hmm. and, and, and walk to everybody else's beat, but I'm good and walking to my own. So, but yes. I'm conscious of how I make other people feel. Of course you are. You know, I, it's so funny. We're bringing this conversation up and we're going to get it on track, but <laughs> Tiffany and I was just having this conversation. Right. Tiffany, you want to kind of share without putting me out there too bad. Uh, this conversation we were having the other night. Go ahead, Tiffany. I, I, uh, we were just having a conversation more about uh, Valerie being direct, um, mm. you know, and how others can perceive that directness. Um, mm-hmm. And what I have learned with working with Valerie is mm-hmm. she is still direct, mm-hmm. but even more conscious of like the way she puts her words and connects her words so that it's not you know, offensive to others. Mm-hmm. Well, well it, it can be damaging to others when you get in your feelings. Yeah. So listen, I'm just going to put well, that disclaimer this out there. Correction, <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on. Go. A person's wisdom yields patience and it is of one's glory to overlook an offense. I want more glory, so I ain't getting offended. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'll be telling you, I'm undefendable. Did I offend you that? You couldn't. Can you please say that <laughs> one more time? You... I think it's Proverbs nineteen eleven. It is of one a person's wisdom yields patience, and it is of one's glory to overlook an offense. Okay, so mm-hmm. in other words, we're gonna break that down, and you tell me if I'm breaking it down right. No, mom, you're mm-hmm. breaking it down right. Okay, in order for you to grow mm. and go where you need to go, sometimes you have to get offended because you gotta kind of you you may need that skin to that scab to be uh you know just kind of scraped up a little bit Mm -hmm. so something can get in there for a little correction Mm -hmm. you know because if we keep walking and doing the things the way we've been doing it in Mm -hmm. our mind we think we're doing it right Mm -hmm. we ain't growing we just doing what we think is right so Mm -hmm. uh offend me yeah Yeah. absolutely and so it can be offensive if you got a a gray hair hanging out your nose i'm gonna say gray hair yeah without calling what it is a booger yeah. yeah. This radio station is not responsible. <laughs> okay. So but, it can be offensive uh, if you tell them they got the gray hair <laughs> and, and their nose. You know, but it, it's 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 double offensive if you allow them to just walk around with that. Right. 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 <laughs> right. So we have a responsibility. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To really be honest and, and and be truthful and try to pour into a person. I know we got off of this, but I think all of this was it's relevant. It's all in line. Yes. Oh, yeah. And can I just say one come thing on, about on. you? Like you are literally when you're correcting people, you're bringing them up higher because you see their potential and you're like a mentor. I see you as like your ceiling. You're making it other people's floors, so you're bringing them up as you climb come on, and girl. Live, come like on, you're girl. A steam that so, woman, girl. You. You're this talking. is who I'm aspiring to be like. I say it all the time. Oh, my God. Yes. yes. Oh, you're going to make me cry. Because truly, that's, true, I, that's truly who I am. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I, I really do believe that this purpose, and I know we're off, but I have to say it, this next piece of my journey mm-hmm. is about helping others. Mm-hmm. The ones that want to be helped. Now, mm-hmm. there are going to be people that are going to fall off. They need to fall off mm-hmm. because if you're unwilling to accept the help and mm-hmm. grow, mm-hmm. then that's on you because yep. I'm giving it there. I'm putting it there. Yep. Oh, thank you, Lord. Yeah. <sighs> what does it mean? This mean what does it mean to say stay in your lane? <laughs> oh, Tiffany, you you want to tackle this one? Oh, she done drunk some water on this. Come right? on, Tiffany, you ready for this one here? What does it mean to, to stay, stay in your, your lane? lane? Stay in your lane. Um, I would say that it means to really in short mind your business almost. Um, (laughs) no, really, but um, I'll Stephanie, I'll let you take that one. (laughs) I actually actually think you're on to something. There's um, a a man, his name is Drake. See see how y'all gonna get Mm -hmm. come on, come on. Some may call him call him Drizzy, um, but others call him Drake. And, and what did he say? And he said, uh, "Pick a lane, pick a lane. That's all I ever heard. I'm just trying to swerve without hitting the curb." Oh. And I said, "That is a good analogy. People need to, as you said, Tiffany, 
mind your business. Mm -hmm. Being in your lane is you focused on where you're going, what you're doing. When you're looking at everyone else, then you may not get to your destination. Mm -hmm. I, I tell people all the time, I am um, a head minister of Mind Your Business Ministries. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I am very good <laughs> at being in my own lane. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Let me say this here. I told y'all, <laughs> I told, you know what I want to do right now? I think I need a really short uh, song, and I know if the conversation is good, mm -hmm. but I need to tease y'all up because I want y'all to get ready. Look at Justin. Justin done jumped up in here. Uh, what is Justin B. Long saying over here? Uh, <laughs> th that's, that's my brother over here. What is he saying? He said. What did Justin say? Hold on. He said. Back yes, in the WWF days, The Rock said, "Know your role and shut your mouth." LOL. <laughs> and, and, and look, and look at Vernon. What and then you... Vernon said, "Without conflict, there is no peace." And I agree with that one. Yes, yes. Good. I, I told y'all this conversation is going to be good. I don't mean no harm, but I got to pay a bill. I got to pay a bill real quick, and then we'll be right back. Don't go nowhere. Wow, it's the God in us. Mm -hmm. I tell you. Oh, Lord, let me tell you. Y'all ready? I had to just step off for a minute. I'm not going to lie. This thing over here is hot. I'm just going to come back out here and I'm going to throw this question out here and I'm going to let, I'm going to throw it right to you, Stephanie. Okay. And Tiffany, I want you to grab some of this and give it back. Turning the other cheek is always considered the right and honorable thing to do. Mm-hmm. When is it okay to stand your ground and speak up? Mm. Ooh. You know, like, come on. Mm. I think we should normalize come on. standing your ground. Normalize. Just as much as we, you know, talk about turning the other cheek, standing mm -hmm. your ground is just as important. I, I, taking it back to Jesus. People act like Jesus was like the Bible does talk about him being meek, but Jesus wasn't mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. weak. That's what I can you can you please stay right there? Everybody yeah. wants Jesus to look like he was this weak person. This this this. Actually, was, in his weakness, he was strong. Come on, you know that. That's, okay, keep going. I'm sorry. Yeah, I actually, just, in his weakness, yeah. he was strong. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. I just had to go there it's the truth. And I think we need to normalize that it is just as important to stand our ground and to speak up for ourselves. It doesn't have to be um, a situation where there's strife and there's mm -hmm. bickering and it could literally just be you asserting yourself and communicating. Yes. Communication. Yes. We always think of an argument. So we, we turn the other cheek because we want to avoid an argument, but Sometimes it doesn't have to be an argument. And it is going back to what I said earlier. When you don't stand up for yourself, you literally abandon yourself. You don't treat yourself well. I remember the Lord told me like maybe six years ago. Mm -hmm. He said, um, if I would have created you to be, if I wanted you to be a doormat when I created you, then that's what I would have uh, created mm -hmm. you to be. Mm -hmm. So he'd have made you, or if he wanted you to be something that they can wipe their feet on. Listen. He'd have created you to just be that with no substance, no nothing, just be a, be a man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And and I would say oh this, if, if you are standing your ground with people that are continuing to test you and to try you, then you need to put a boundary there where you practice what's called loving detachment. And you begin to love that person from afar and remove yourself from the situation until they can honor the boundary that you have set. Oh, I'm not going any further. Team. I need to make sure we get this part because somebody needs to hear that. And I did appreciate. Can you repeat that one more time? One more time. <laughs> I was just saying that <laughs> if you are around someone and you are standing your ground and they're continuing to try to overthrow you, mm -hmm. then you need to do, you need to put a boundary in place, but you need to practice what is called loving detachment, where you start loving to love detachment. this person from afar. So you're able to still honor yourself um, and honor your boundary, even if they don't want to. Oh, I, I Listen, people who people who don't honor other people's boundaries are the people who don't have boundaries oh. and they love that they could take advantage of you the way that they did when you weren't implementing those things oh, in your life. My mm. God. Mm. And they become very frustrated with oh you and they want to make you be the problem because yeah. you're saying I, 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 I. back up. 
draw the line. There you go. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely not. No, oh, you got to be careful I, with hurt people. Ooh. Because I just they would like tend to, to want to put oh. their hurt upon you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Jump in here, so, Tiffany. We what you got there, be- Tiffany? No, I was just going to say, I love what she said, too, because <clears throat> when it comes to the detachment, because you will find yourself, if you don't detach from those people, you will you find, find yourself holding so much in to the point it can almost even make you physically ill. Um, So you have to create those boundaries. And even if they don't understand it, you have to do it for yourself. You have to do it for your own mental. So I I really resonate with that. I like that a lot. Most of the time, they're not going to understand it. Or even if they understand it, they don't want you to do it because they've been used to manipulating and controlling you. And so when they start to see a change in you, you, they say they want to put it on you like you're doing something wrong when in fact right. what you're doing is you're growing yes. you're protecting yes. and you're saying no no longer not because just because you're my my uh friend yeah. or because you're spouse. my spouse mm-hmm. or because you're my mother or my sister mm-hmm. if it's unhealthy it's unhealthy yeah. and you right. have to put those boundaries there yep Oh God, that was good. That you was have good. permission to remove yourself from mm-hmm. any any relationship that is causing you emotional harm. Mm. You have a right yep. to protect your inner being. Absolutely, yes. you know, that doesn't belong to everyone. No. That belongs to you. It does. Lord. Okay, as a kid growing up, we're always told we're always told to stay in our place, stay in a child's place, mm-hmm. and speak up and speak out what speak up and speak out a lesson we should teach the future generations okay so i'm trying to understand who wrote that question can i can i read it yes go ahead so so what i meant was as a kid growing up we're always told to stay in our place or stay in a child's place is speaking up and speaking out a lesson we should teach to the future generation oh okay well I, I do. I don't think we have to teach them. I think they're doing it on their own right now. I was just about to say. <laughs> go ahead, Tiffany. You know, I was just about to say. Um, I think this generation may. It's not the fact that they speak up and speak out too much. Is is the way that they do things. I feel oh, like they're not on, as yeah. respectful uh-huh. as the way that we used to be. But I also do think. Um, like now, like I told you guys, I'm a mother of two with my daughter who's 11. Um, I think it's very healthy for um, the next generation to speak on how they feel because I know for me as a child, I kept so much in. I kept so much in to the point that nobody even barely knew what I was going. No one knew what I was going through at school. Nobody knew any of my feelings, emotions. No one knew anything. I was quiet. So they thought, oh, she has it all together when Mm -hmm. really I was hurting on the inside. Mm -hmm. So now with my daughter, I do ask her, you know, how are you feeling? Mm -hmm. Um, How are you feeling about is is my parenting? You know, things like that. What are some things mama could do better? Because if you Mm -hmm. don't, Kids will keep that all inside and they will feel mm-hmm. hatred or dislike for mm-hmm. you and you won't find out until they're an adult and they explode. Mm. Yeah. Ooh, that's deep. That is good. That's deep. Uh, I do think that it, uh, along your question, thank you, Tiffany. I do think that w- there was a disservice that was done to my generation mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. that uh, we were taught to Go in the room, be quiet, speak mm-hmm. on yes, it, don't quiet. say anything. That is just definitely. And then what we did is we passed it on. I think that we also had something that was great that was taught to us. And in our parents teaching us that, they was also teaching us about respect. Yeah. And I think mm-hmm. that as we got older and what we tried to do is uh, not so much that we wanted to be our children's friends and kind of loosen the reins a little more. Mm -hmm. I think what we did, we allowed them to have a voice to a point as their voices was okay. As long as they were still saying and doing the way we wanted them to do it. If I can be honest in the moment that their voice got a little out of that way, then immediately we want to come back and check them because Mm -hmm. you can't say have a voice when it's somebody else. And then when it's us, 
that they're talking to, we want to rein it back in. Okay, Holy Ghost, ouch, that hit. This is really <laughs> so uh, I have to be honest. I think that we have a responsibility as parents across the board. Mm. It's in and as adult, young adults, you have a responsibility. We have a responsibility to say you can we can have a conversation, but it needs to be respectful. Mm -hmm. And then the younger generation, you don't come up to your mama and, and elders and saying, hey, girl, and all of that other stuff, because now you have dishonored them and put mm -hmm. them on the same level with your friends. Mm -hmm. And right. there's a way to deliver a respectful conversation with your peers. So of we course. shouldn't tell you to shut up. Uh, it's a time and a place. You just should know, learn how to read the room. You, I mean, read the room. And that's like you have yes. to do on a job. Just read the room. So that was a great question. That's I, it. Yes, that was so good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I think that was a great question. Anybody else wants to I, look at Abigail? She want to jump on in here. Come on in here. Um, I was just going to say, I think it's also a shift of the way people view parenthood. Uh -huh. um, I think parenthood used to be people used to kind of look at their children as like, okay, this is almost, almost like property. Like yeah. this kid is here to make me look good. My kid acts up, I look bad. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think nowadays well, yeah. people are looking at it more as like, no, I'm raising a human mm -hmm. with emotions and I need to teach them to manage those emotions mm -hmm. and how to handle tough emotions or I anger like or, you That's know, really how to set their good. own boundaries too. And I think a lot of parents don't respect their children's boundaries. I, you know what? Ooh, I, I love that. Hold on one second. Before I respond to that, because I really do like that, and that's so true, I want to get it from Jacob. Let's talk about the reason. Come on, Jacob. Uh, what about? And I'm coming from a male, and I'm coming from um, Jacob. How old are you? I'm 30. Okay. Oh, that's a good age group. How old are you, uh, Abby? I am about to be 24 this month. Okay. And how old are you, uh, uh, Kobe? Kobe. 23. Okay. And how old are you? Oh. I'm 19. Okay. Oh. Alrighty. So we're, we're getting some perspectives in here. So Kobe, let's talk about, I'm not Kobe. Not I'm sorry. Jake. Uh, Jacob, let's talk about your age generation and uh, respect and boundaries with your parents and effective and communication. Tell me what your perspective is on this. So I grew up in a very authoritarian household. Mm -hmm. There were rules uh, there were expectations and there were consequences if you didn't meet expectations. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if the this generation got spanked, but I got spanked. <laughs> I got I got hit you, with the you, belt. Yeah. You grew up in Justin B. Long's house. Right? <laughs> yeah. Justin, are you still there? <laughs> and I got hit with the buckle. Uh -huh. too. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it was for things like, you know, not doing great on a math test mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I love my dad to death. Mm -hmm. He's one of my best friends. Mm -hmm. But uh, one thing that I'll always remember is not doing so great on a math test mm -hmm. and coming downstairs the next morning and him being like, Oh, look who it is. It's Mr. 73. How's oh, it going, Mr. 73? Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> How are you feeling this morning? Yes. And so, and so are you able to talk to him now? Well, you you had to you had to accept it's, that back it's then. so interesting growing up yeah. i never i never stood up to him i yeah. never did mm -hmm. uh what he said was final mm -hmm. and i actually have a younger sister and for whatever reason she could stand up to him and she won mm -hmm. she got her way mm -hmm. <laughs> she did she didn't bend she and he <laughs> and he would yeah. so i'm like yeah. all this time all i had to do was maybe stand my ground and yeah Maybe he could have heard my side of the story, mm -hmm. but I was too I was right. too scared yeah. to right. speak. That, that reminded me of a show that I was watching on yeah, TV thank yesterday. You. I love thank that. you for that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, not Justin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, that was Jacob. But girls, uh, girls are more courageous than us guys are. I was watching this movie, this show yesterday, and these girls, uh, a guy called the girl the B word. Mm -hmm. And uh her girlfriend was like, what? She started taking her earrings <laughs> off. Yeah. Mind you, these are not no little bitty fellas. Mm -hmm. So women will get in there and they, they'll get after you. They don't care how, they don't think about, they just like uh, lionettes or something. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they, yeah. they'll jump out on you real quick, man. And, they, and we as guys, uh, 
we look for another way out of the situation. I think, situation you, I think or what it like is, I think that you guys are very logical. Y'all very black oh, and white. For sure. And so what ends up happening, you're you're reading the room, you're thinking the process through, you're thinking you're trying to size up everything yeah. while we're sitting here like, huh, no, you say something. Something. I don't <laughs> have my right now, I don't have my <laughs> Come on, we're gonna figure it out and then y'all gotta complete it up afterwards. But uh we go we go on all the end. So I think it all worked out for the balance. Uh Jacob, I want to say to you, uh, you are courageous because look at what you just did. You spoke your truth. Mm -hmm. And Abigail, yeah. what you said is so true. I think that this generation, these parents today, some of them are learning to uh, teach their young, ch to understand that they are human beings that we're raising. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? And not that we didn't think that. Mm -hmm. I think that literally parenting comes from how you were parent yes. and it's not necessarily a bad thing. Mm -hmm. It's just what, you know, mm -hmm. you know, my parents could only teach me what they knew. Yeah. And so I had to get to a point that I, especially with my dad, mm -hmm. because, uh, I had to get to a point that I was able to forgive him because that's all he knew. Yes. You know, so. And, and just to touch on that really quick, mm -hmm. I think that, um, we have to get to a place where we don't hold that stuff against our parents yes. mm -hmm. and we allow ourselves to forgive them mm -hmm. and to move forward. And like you said, to just realize that they did the best they could with what they had and what they mm -hmm. knew. Mm -hmm. And now that you are growing and you are <clears throat> unlearning and learn, relearning things, you get to do things differently. Yes. But mm -hmm. we need to forgive our parents. I think a lot of people struggle and they like, you inflicted all this trauma on me mm -hmm. and that is so valid mm -hmm. and that is very true. But you're going to have to at some point heal mm -hmm. and uh, forgive them. Does that also come from that healing process has to come from a conversation that needs to take place? Nope. Okay. I don't think so. Okay, let's talk about that. I think people, we like always talk about you need to have closure and you know you need to go to the person. You need to hear them say that you're They're sorry. sorry yeah. They're sorry and they have remorse you know, for what they did. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people don't, they haven't even come to the realization that, that what they, they did. did Wrong. Wrong. Right. <laughs> and I feel like I feel like closure only works when you're hearing what you want to hear. Oh. <laughs> so if you're going, if you're seeking out closure, you hear this, too? this is good. This if is you're good. seeking out closure, you got to be prepared that you may not hear what you want to hear. Right. You know, right. the other person may not be ready to give you mm. that closure, yeah. and so you have to find it within yourself. Absolutely. And whether it be forgiveness, some people find that they can forgive. Some people just forget. You know, mm. whatever that yeah. is. But if you're seeking out that piece from another person right if it's not exactly what you want to hear you're not going to get the results you're looking for yep y'all preaching around oh, here my. it's like drinking poison <clears throat> and expecting someone else to die <laughs> uh, oh, wait a minute say that one more time it, it's it's like drinking poison and then you're expecting someone else to die you that drink the poison yes it, it is it it's is in you oh, wow see the thing is uh our forefathers didn't have the information that is provided for the next generation. This generation has so much information mm -hmm. that they can process things a lot better than we did. We just had to follow the rules coming up. Yeah. I'm 61 yeah. years old on uh, next Tuesday. Uh, last, uh, I was brother 6-0. Uh, this, uh, this week, I'm brother 6-1. So. Next when we come back, he's going to be 6-1, yeah. <laughs> I turned 61 on the 18th of October. Nice. So that's why I'm, I'm unlicensed, but I have six decades of experience. <laughs> there you go, right? Okay. All and that's right. what Justin would say. Justin B. Long would say, talk about all the information yes. that people have today. And they are able to allow their children to be children and be expressive and yep. all these different things mm -hmm. where we, when we came up, we didn't have that opportunity. Yep. And yeah. I don't think that it was because of just not really wanting them to be expressive. I mm -hmm. think the tool, like you said, the tools just wasn't there. And they we wouldn't allow us to, because yeah. I mean, it was a stern growing, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. you know, I said, do like I say, do not like I do. And a lot of times our parents uh, didn't want us to see what they were doing because mm. they was doing some some old wicked stuff. And, and the other thing and they, too they was wanted to shelter us from from it. Yes, and then <clears throat> the other thing was, I believe too, 
while they were doing what they were doing, they also had this thing that they had to do, especially in the black community. Mm -hmm. They had to protect us. So they couldn't say that when they said to you, don't go there, don't mm -hmm. do this, don't act like that. Mm -hmm. It it wasn't up for discussion because yeah. they knew that it can change your life or take your life. So oh. you know, so I, I or think they might be there too, so they ain't want you to talk. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, you know, you know, you know, <laughs> that might be true, but I'm just talking about a lot of times when we were going out, you know, and mm -hmm. doing things. So if you think back to the 60s and the 70s, mm -hmm. when we came up, it was still, I know now it's going, we kind of mm -hmm. circling back again, you know, nothing yeah. is new under the sun. Yeah. Yes. Nothing is new at the times that we're in now is nothing <clears throat> different. Yeah. Yeah. We, However, we just grew up under the do like I say, do yes. not like I do. Yeah, dictatorship. That's, that's what it was. Dictatorship. Uh, no, we a fan. What's a butts about it? I'm gonna throw this to one of the team members. Give us a question and who it just put it out there. Take one of these here, whoever wants to take it, and give it to the team, and we will see what we have to say. <laughs> what Abigail talking about? Okay. Do you think staying quiet makes you the bigger person? Mm. Oh. I believe that depends on the situation. So, <laughs> well, I, I was just going to say that I feel like um, certain situations need to be acknowledged and then they need to be dealt with. But then you have to also be mindful of people that are trying to pull things out of you. Everything um, doesn't have to be acknowledged. Oh. You know, if you know that someone is purposely trying you and trying to bring you down to their level there you do need to stand up for yourself but you also gotta you know be mindful of who you even entertain hmm. Did that that's a word that, that right there did y'all get that <laughs> tiffany repeat that i was Come just on. saying that some people you know some people you have to be mindful of who you entertain you have to be mm -hmm. mindful of those that are trying to bring you down to their level Mm -hmm. And want you and try to pull something out of you mm -hmm. when you're when you're standing up for yourself. That's totally different than dealing with someone who's being petty. Mm -hmm. And when you get into that right there, petty don't need to be acknowledged. Come mm -hmm. on, oh. come on. <laughs> I, didn't I tell you, I, listen. <laughs> I mean, it's connected. After this. I told you. I t <laughs> Baby, God, don't make no mistakes. Okay, uh, did that answer your question? That yes, was man. That answered my I question. Well, I don't know say, somebody else can elaborate on that. Huh? Well, I don't think I don't have anything else to say. Tiffany dropped the mic. I don't have anything to say. Mike dropped. Anybody else have anything to jump on that? Not to make, I like y'all throwing us questions. Come on. Give it to us. This one kind of kind of goes uh, off of that one. So as a woman, have you ever felt misunderstood when you're trying to convey your thoughts or feelings? And do you feel like as women, we hold back so that we to avoid being misunderstood? Oh, oh no, not oh. no. You're not a woman. <laughs> that was for us. Uh, <laughs> stay in your lane, Brother uh, Carter. Uh, stay in your lane. Uh, I'm, I'm an unlicensed female. <laughs> <but I'm not laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm observing. <laughs> no, 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 they're not gonna be quiet. If something needs to be said, the woman is gonna say it. But not all women. Not, yeah. Okay, come on, I'm, uh, uh, Stephanie, you go. I think you need to have a, a certain level of maturity to recognize when someone is committed to misunderstanding you, no matter how you convey the message. Mm. Yes. Okay, you did a twist on that. <laughs> <laughs> come on with it. Come, come on. Come I, on. I like that because I've had conversations with people before, typically mm -hmm. in like workspaces with men. You know what I mean? <laughs> Where like you're trying to like explain it as best as you can or trying to get your point across. And they're just like, nope, nope, just not listening. Yeah. Or they're like twisting it to be like, act like you said something wrong. And you're like, yeah. no, I know what I said. Yes. I know what I'm trying to, I know the point I'm trying to get there. Mm -hmm. And like, they're just, they're being stubborn. Like they're not trying, they don't want to understand well, you. Yeah. Well, can it be that they're not being stubborn, but they just want to make sure that they're keeping you in your place. And ooh, yes, because yeah. historically, okay, no, come on. No, women uh, have uh, been, uh, uh, baby, you are number here. Come on, keep going. Uh, keep going. Uh, I'm going to speak up with me, but go ahead. <laughs> come on. Historically, women have not uh, been as 
much of a priority right. in society as men have. There are still a lot of situations and a lot of vocations in the United States where women aren't even paid right. the same as men. Women aren't able to vocalize their opinions and thoughts. Mm -hmm. Women are looked at in corporate settings as being too emotional yes. or, and let's not even bring, you know, race into this mm -hmm. um, because if you're a African American woman, then you're emotional and angry. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that women have historically been put in a position where they have been um, muzzled. Absolutely. 100%. And told that they're less than. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and they and they and they say it in a way that is not even verbalized. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh Brother Carla, you're unlicensed woman. So so okay, come on. So from a male's perspective. <laughs> oh god. And you're well, brother from Vernon, a male's perspective, I think Brother that, Vernon said, What is the number? I need to call in. Three four six three five five zero one hundred. Put that down there for us. That's three four six three five five zero one hundred. Well, from a male's perspective, I believe that uh, males tend to not have, uh, I'm trying to make this uh -huh. even for, for both sides. Oh, no, just put it on the unlicensed. No, no, we have, we have <laughs> the it. candid no. ability to not, we can't process a, a long conversation, <laughs> okay, as men. Oh, God, you do And, and, and I'm putting us all as a, in a group here, but no, I, no, every man no, is not really like that. Every man is not like that, and and, and you women, y'all, y'all long winded. See, and when y'all want to, see how it's not, true though. No, y'all think they long winded. Can I get an amen? The amount, of, <laughs> the amount of words that a woman says in yeah. a day compared to the amount of words that a that a man says in a day on average, yes. we like double. Yeah, that. yes. But, but but so should I be? I'm just going to put it on me. Uh -huh. Should I be penalized because thou don't want to open up thy mouth? No, no, oh, no, no. I'm just saying that most of the time we just want to get to the point. <laughs> and so instead of going, <laughs> yeah. you know, I, I'm trying to figure out what, what, what we're talking about because you started here and then you start going over there. And so <laughs> now we, then I find out we 20 years back and I don't know what, what the it's hell true. is going on. Okay, okay, so the reason so I can't I can't fix nothing. <laughs> Somebody needs to help. That's not that's not happening in our house. Jacob looked like he <laughs> Jacob, what you got to say. Well, I think what you said was very interesting because <laughs> I, and I'm being dead serious because I think men are wired to problem solve right. and Ooh. fix things. Yeah. Ooh. So a woman will come to you and she'll she will express herself and you're trying to find a solution mm -hmm. and she's not even really concerned about a solution. She right. just she, she just, just wants to be to, heard. Right. She just wants to know that you're listening. Yes. Yes. And we lose sight of that. Yeah. And it's hard because mm -hmm. yeah. that's in our DNA. Yeah, okay. Well, y'all need to work on y'all listening skills. Absolutely. And what we're going to do, uh, y'all really need to work on these listening yeah. skills. Now, we've been I'm having so this I'm so glad show. you have girlfriends. <laughs> you know <what> <laughs> <laughs> y'all listen you really need to work on your list <laughs> you know what we got to get this thing back on track yeah. okay so you because we, we you know uh, most of us uh, uh males we we seek to try to understand you yeah. know we don't necessarily have to be understood as much as a, a woman but you do want to be understood as yeah. i said as much as a woman need mm -hmm. to be understood that's why we y'all get forget forgotten about because you don't need to be understood we need to be understood whenever we open our mouth right so you need to come up the one mm -hmm. if we want to be and see I, I gotta learn how to uh, what did Bob say? esteem <laughs> esteem <laughs> others better than ourselves <laughs> so i need to start listening a little bit better mm -hmm. oh Lord, i got i got people all on the board raising their hands <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit crazy in here. Come on, come on. What you got to say? Yeah, I, I get what you're saying, but I also get what Brother Carter oh, No, we're not going to come in. You're going, no, 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 no. You're going to stay on one side of the other. Pick, pick a lane, pick a lane. I don't As need Mr. Drink No, thing. we are not going to have no wishy washy. What's your side? What side you on? Stay on that side or this side? Well, you can't when threaten you, the man because yeah, he is the employee. I am the host of the Love and Victory show with Val. So, what lane are you going in? All right, I'm going to go. Okay, there you go. Then go on over and stay there. Um, but the reason why it, he he's actually yeah, he's right when he said that y'all are more understood than us because once we try to get to that, it goes back to what we said on men's P 
POV, the man up um, conversation that goes into mm-hmm. it. We're supposed to be strong and we shouldn't be always thinking about that all the time. So that's why that's sometimes point. we're not. Well, y'all need to work on it. That's all I got to tell you. Y'all need to work but on that's it. that's so true. <laughs> yes. Go ahead. Y'all, what side you stand on? Okay, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Clearly, I'm a floater. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that for me. I want to make this. You're a, no, you're, a tr- you're a truth seeker. Yes. Right? You, okay. Come on. Yes, you, 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 you seek the truth. And when you hear the truth, the <laughs> truth sets you free. <laughs> I'm in this place. <laughs> well, come on, darling. Hey, Kobe, I'm sorry for making you pick up side but you're gonna stay on that side that's all right all right then. come on Mr. i just agree with what he's saying like i mean it's really a mirror we say historically women have been silenced but historically so have men mm. they have been taught to put your head down work you don't need to say much just provide you don't mm. have to have you know as much input on certain things and so the but i'm still on your side but that's good uh, what you're saying but i'm gonna come for you Okay, but I'm gonna, yeah, see, just remember that when you see. Okay, well, well, no, 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 no. Please turn that mic off. I'm, I'm, I got the mic right now. Don't turn it off. Y'all, they are cutting up. Okay, so they're taught to do that, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, keep the head down. But what were the women taught? We had yeah. to move in silence. But at some point, yeah. we no. tuned it all that's, up. And that's what yeah, I said. Y'all saying. been muzzled so long. Y'all are not shutting up no more. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Will you know. not. <laughs> it ain't happening. Uh-uh. It ain't happening. Y'all had to sit in that kitchen and, and cook and clean okay. and then be a mother and then be a wife. And, and the husband was going out there just being the boy. And when he Rolling come home. You know, yeah. and, and, and guess what's happening yeah, now? Was, y'all talking now. So if you go out there and roll, keep on rolling. <laughs> Come on. That's for all the men. All the men. He wants to roll, roll on down roll the hill. Roll on down the hill. All right. <laughs> so let me put my glasses on so we can okay. so we can look at another question. Okay, we gotta take a shit. We gotta pay some bills. Oh, okay. Um, okay, we're gonna no, pay a, a half a bill. Okay, a half a, a bill. A half huh? a bill. And can I get wait, wait, wait. I need I need a half a bill and a song that's a don't come with nothing ragged. Don't come with nothing. Stephanie, give me a good time. And this song. would be a okay. good time to give us a call okay. at 346-355-0100. That number again is 346-355-0100. It's Don't Love and Victory Show, show with Val them. on Raise the Praise 100. Baby, when I tell you, they lost, I lost all control of this studio. I tell you, I had stuff coming from the south, the west, the phones ringing. Oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. So we have Mr. Vernon that said he just had to get in here and get some of this conversation. Good morning, Mr. Vernon. How you doing? I can't hear him. Can y'all bring him on in here? Hello, Mr. Vernon? Do you not have him on the line? What happened? Did you take it off of the... Uh, Good morning. How you there doing? you go. How you there you go. Doing? How you doing, Mr. Vernon? Hello? You doing okay? Can you hear us? We heard him and then we lost him. What happened? Let's pull in Mr. Speaker. I'm doing all right. Oh, I'll there you right. go. There you go. Okay, Mr. It Vernon, might you, be delayed a little you bit. wanted yeah. some of this candid conversation over here. Give us a little bit. What was your thought on uh, Brother Carter went all off the rails? Uh, you know, he needed some help. So he just sent you a mass text saying, help. What you got for us? Hello? I think he delayed a little bit. No, no. <laughs> you know, so, so my, my concern, is, I, I, I'll say like, I'll tell this here, because uh, I'm listening to the conversation, and I feel like what's happening is, is that in society, it's been it's been as a man against a woman, and I also and and I think that we have to go back and understand that if we're to operate, especially in relationships, because I've been married for thirty years of my life since I was nineteen years old, and I've been in this I'm on my second marriage. We know that, and so what I told my wife was. When I got remarried, I told her, I said, hey, listen, this time we're not going to live according to society. We're going to live according to what we do and what we know to do and what works for our relationship. So guess what? We didn't do that. We got off track and we started living according to the rules of society, and it almost cost us our marriage. Mm-hmm. So what we had to do is we had to go back and we had to be focused and look and where, and where we went off track. What we went off track was is that we started making our relationship a competition 
the man against the woman mm. instead of us being a team and working together as a team. Mm-hmm. You know, and so I think that sometimes we lose sight of, hey, this is what we're here for. We're here to take care of one another. Mm-hmm. Yes, I'll say historically that, yes, the women have, have been degraded. Uh, their, their voice has not been heard. I also just say historically that the man has been said, hey, you need to carry this load that's unrealistic. Mm-hmm. But when I come to a point where I say, you know what, none of that is disrespectful. It's in you. You know, mm-hmm. what are we going to do? What are we going to do to take care of one mm-hmm. another? What are we going to do to take care of this relationship? Mm-hmm. If we focus like that, I feel like that it puts us in a better place. Mm-hmm. You know, because I'm not, especially if they're in that marriage, I'm not here to, to be a come and, 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 and compete against you. Mm-hmm. I'm here to work with you, you know, because I need your strength. I tell my wife this all the time. When I come home, I need to have your healing hands on me. I need you. Mm-hmm. Okay, then. You know, I, and I think it's the same thing with her. She needs me to help hold her up also. All righty. I, you know, I, I think that's some that's some very good uh, feedback, mm-hmm. and I think mm-hmm. that 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 helps us all because mm-hmm. we have to keep it about each other and not yeah. and not the relationship and not as you over here and I'm mm-hmm. over here. We're actually a one. Well, uh, what I'm hearing yeah. is you got us back on there. Oh, he's gone. Yeah. Yeah, he, said, he said what he had to say and dropped yeah. the mic. Okay, okay. Bernie, what, I, what I'm hearing is that, was very good. is that uh, the things that we've been taught on how relationships go, mm-hmm. uh, we need to throw that out the window. Yes. And and learn how to uh, do a, give me, hit me with a word here. <laughs> uh, uh, what, uh, stir the pot? Yeah, yeah we, got, we, got, we got to uh, uh, reshape. Okay. way we've been doing things yeah, in okay. relationships yes. because like I was saying earlier Justin B. Long would talk about information that we have today to allow us to be able to uh, uh, broaden should mm-hmm. I say mm-hmm. our understanding of relationships Relationship, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I get where you're going <clears throat> so it kind of goes back to back in the day uh, the woman belonged in the kitchen cooking and cleaning yeah. and a woman yeah. has evolved a man uh Used to speak you have to, on you have to evolve as well as yeah, a man. As a man, you mm-hmm. can't have those same until the way yep. you, you was brought up and all this kind and of stuff. And bring that into a relationship yeah, right, and right. think that that's mm-hmm. going to have a healthy relationship right. because a woman is no longer just saying it's not willing to just and it's not mm-hmm. even it's not even feasible for a woman no. to just sit at home. Right. No, you know. So no. I think we have to come out of that. And you got to understand yeah. your mate. As well, oh, you know, yeah. every every relationship not going to be the same, right? You know, Ooh, right, so, yeah. right, right. We need a relationship series from you. You know all. what? Yeah. I, you know, we've been talking about that. I'm a, I'm it's a, cuffing I'm a, season. I'm a, I'm a it is. So we yeah. would love a relationship series from the quarters oh. for cuffing season. Oh, yeah, for, right. oh, that sounds. What y'all think? Y'all y'all wrote that down. You heard what she said. Yes, we need to have a relationship because people are gonna be cuffing up to the wrong person. Oh, mm-hmm. right. Down, we're gonna well, do that talk, and I think uh, we need to have a young somebody that's trying to cuff ooh, and somebody that's already cuffed. cuffed. And the carters are already be cuffed, and we might bring somebody in here that's trying to cuff. All I right, mean, I think that's gonna be a good conversation, Miss <laughs> Tiffany. Yes, ma'am. Girl, I, I, had think, to get I had, think that's a wonderful uh selection the cuffing season edition especially like she said at a time like this because i don't know if you guys know but when it starts getting cold outside it starts getting darker sooner people Mm. will link up with anybody and anything just so they won't be alone so Mm -hmm. so i never knew see that's the younger generation the top so they start cuffing yes looking for somebody that'll keep them company yes ma'am Lord, y'all. Well, I tell you what. Thank you, baby, for keeping me comfort. Oh. for forty-four years. I've been cuffing yes. up for two a minute. Uh, yeah, Jesus, I like my cuffing. You like the hell? You want handcuffs too? See, I can every time. Every time. Every time I let Brooke Carter say something, she give him an inch. Give him an inch. He gonna come out there and just go that mile. Yeah. Well, let's chunk this next question at Miss Tiffany Washington right here. Yeah. Uh, Kobe, give me that, that first question under the nine o'clock second segment. Okay, I got you. We now live in a society where whatever you say can be taken out of context. How do you avoid being misunderstood or having your words taken out of context? Oh. Tiffany, he threw that right at you. I think cancel culture kind of plays a role in this question, too. Okay, come on, Tiffany. What you got to say on that? 
Um, I would say healthy communication. Um, the only way for something to not be taken out of context is for you to relay it the best way that you can. Um, some people though listen to not understand. So, you know, you can't <laughs> help those people. <laughs> some people are going to take it out of context, no matter how you say it, no matter what mm -hmm. your body language is, but all that you can do is make sure that you have those boxes checked tone of voice, mm -hmm. body language, and just how you present yourself. That's the that's really the best way that's to good, not be right. taken out of context. Oh, no. come on on Jesus. to this show, Miss <laughs> Tiffany. Oh, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Uh, uh, Abigail, you were saying something. Uh, now, you said, uh, what kind of culture is this? Cancel culture. What is a cancel culture? See, I'm learning. Teach me something. This, yeah. Yeah. So, cancel Teach. culture kind of comes from, like, just, like, online, social media kind of thing, where, like, someone who makes a mistake or like says something that is deemed as like bad or wrong or immoral. And it gets, sometimes it's, it's these people get canceled, you know, they oh. get, they kind of, they get their careers like, Oh, let's cancel this person. Don't watch their stuff or don't listen to them. That's why I have to do. I have to constantly do the disclaimer for brother Carter. So we don't get cancel culture. Yes. That's more oh. that's legal, but cancel culture is more just like kind of how people view you. Oh, mm -hmm. but a culture can't cancel you. That didn't create. There you, you go. See that. I, I love I, that. You can't I, cancel me, baby. I'm just going to reinvent myself in a different way. Oh. And our, our society is very hypersensitive. Mm. And like yes. Tiffany was Girl, saying, you can say thing. it the mm -hmm. best way that you can and they'll still take it how they want to take mm -hmm. it they'll hear it how they want to hear it and they'll take it out of context and they'll, mm -hmm. and they'll run with it and they'll try to make you feel like you're the bad person mm -hmm. but really you're speaking the truth and people don't want to hear the truth they don't mm -hmm. want to hear facts I tell people all the time your feelings are not the facts I know mm -hmm. that that's how you feel but that's not the facts oh mm -hmm. so for me it's like if culture wants to cancel me by so all means, how I mean, mm -hmm. what you say? I'm gonna reinvent. Absolutely, you because you can't cancel something that you didn't create. Oh my God, did y'all right. hear that? Yeah. yeah, and she's a woman, and you ain't gonna shut her up no way. So <laughs> period. <laughs> That's all <I> care. <laughs> All right. Well, oh Lord. Okay, I'm ready for the next one. You ready, Abby? And, 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 and I'm, I'm, okay. uh, I'm gonna put my little two cent in there to piggyback mm -hmm. off of what you were saying about uh, this society is so sensitive. Okay, yeah, and, you know, and you have to be careful. You know what I mean? It's a shame you have to be careful everything what yes. you say to different people. You mm -hmm. can't sometimes you can't even speak your own truth. Oh, for because sure, because right. people take take it literally, mm -hmm. like you're trying to tear them down, right? Mm -hmm. Right, right. And I'm gonna leave that alone. We want to be offended. You know, yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. go. You there you go. You want to be offended <laughs> when there is nothing there to offend. Just listen. It goes back to what yeah. I was saying. You can't grow if somebody can't tell you can't hear. Absolutely, nothing. you can't grow. So sometimes you need to hear. Yeah. yeah. In order to grow. So baby, I clean sometimes, it up. Sometimes you don't want to hear because you want to just stay. You just think. Absolutely. You just think that's who you are. Is, mm -hmm. is, is what it's supposed, supposed to, be. to be. Yep. And you're not trying to elevate. Outside of who you this, are, the, yep, the that's barriers. called ego syntonic. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, see, this is this is what happens see, when you get. See, you, I don't know all this. <laughs> see, you had a license for this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll put y'all again. Yeah. But she, so she. So what, what, what did I just say, girl? So what you just described is a person who is ego syntonic. And you were saying that like they're like this is just the way that I am. Mm -hmm. They don't really see much wrong with it. They're yeah. comfortable with mm -hmm. staying in, the, in you know, that in that place. place. Yeah. Yes. Wow, I know some people like that. <laughs> we all do. Yeah. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. and we gonna move on from that before we <clears throat> say who we know. That's what, like what? <laughs> what, what <laughs> no, where to get ego? Ego syntonic. Syntonic. Oh, and the people that we know that they see where they messed up and they want to correct it. They that's ego dystonic. They don't like this part of themselves, oh. and so they're willing to work on it. Yeah, Tiffany, oh. didn't I tell you you need to be in the yeah. house? Tiffany, Washington. Tiffany, come on. I told you you need to be in the house. Are y'all learning See, something today? Yeah. I, I appreciate I appreciate you, Stephanie, because, oh. you know, you, you solidify my unlicensed <laughs> very well. <laughs> <laughs> ain't nobody ain't nobody but justin be she's, long at her she's, yeah yeah justin is good at it too but she's yeah. she's the one that yeah, got you yeah i need you by my side you know to explain what i'm doing here, you know right 
<laughs> I'm doing some works around here. Ooh, how y'all get anything done in here? <laughs> we tried so hard. We, it just goes off the rail. I'm ready. We, can you give us the next yes, one? Yes. Okay, so, thank you. I, I kind of want to take it in another direction. Ask about social media, because I think we all know somebody who just posts way too much, posting oh. all their business on social media. Oh, okay. So my question is, mm. what is how your question? does social media, or I'm sorry, is it better to be more private on social media or more open? And what are the benefits of that? Like when- when That goes back to the shut up and- the, okay, Yeah, okay. like when, when should you say mm. like, mm, maybe I shouldn't post this on social media? Well, first of all, <sighs> Um, mm. Let me start. Help us out. That, that's one. Here's one of the things. Help us mm -hmm. out. Social media is just what it is. It's a, it's a way people show you what they want to show you. Yes. So the, half of the stuff on there is not true. Yeah. If I had time to sit down and really put everything that I'm doing on social media, I would get nothing done. So right. let's just say people are doing snippets to make themselves look more important yeah or they're trying to gain sympathy mm -hmm. so in my opinion i think that social media should be used for what i use it for is you're not going to get into my world i'm only going to show you what i want you to see mm -hmm. and it should be something that is used to help elevate if you're not yep. elevating someone or something what are you doing yeah mm -hmm. i mean that's just my opinion I, mm -hmm. i'm gonna leave that right that's there really so good. i need some license uh, soon to be to help you clean this up in Tiffany. To go first, so you let can... the unlicensed. We're gonna let the unlicensed. Yeah. Before I let the unlicensed, I want yeah. Tiffany to come in. <laughs> Tiffany, come on, put something in here on that. What's your thought? Um, I would definitely say, like you said, Valerie, me and you are a lot alike as far as social media goes. You know, showing family, showing good time, encouraging others. Um, but you shouldn't be posting, I personally believe, you know, about your depressed days and constantly being negative. Um, for me, I feel like even when I'm scrolling down my timeline and I'm constantly seeing people talk about, oh, their baby daddy this or nobody loves them. And those kind of things are draining. Those are the kind of things you need to seek a counselor for and not social media. <laughs> Because no one in social media is going to counsel you. Really? Everybody's going to read your personal business and be like, oh, my goodness, this is her every day. She's always sad. She's always depressed. I feel mm -hmm. like people use social media as a diary mm -hmm. rather than just, you know, sharing things that should be shared. So mm -hmm. I think that's that's where people need to think. Should this go in a diary or should this go on my time? <laughs> Oh, yeah, Lord. and I, I I want to say one thing to the to the people out there that it's the unlicensed that, coming in. No, <laughs> I just want to say this one thing to the people out there that, that be in the hospital bed and in the hospital road to get on social media, Come on. be on there crying, stop. recording just, themselves crying. Please stop it. Yeah. Just, Nobody just, wants to see you laying in that hospital bed like that. I mean, you know, just really, just stop. <laughs> <laughs> I got. Why, why did that bother you? Yes, it, 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 I don't like that. I, you remember we was on on a uh, on yielding show yes. just the other day, and she it had a segment, segment called "I don't, I don't like, like this." I don't like it. Okay. I don't like it when don't people like get it. on social media and just do stupid stuff. And that's you crazy. know, laying in a hospital bed, Which... sitting there looking sick as a dog, <laughs> and you got yourself sitting up there. That's that, that just that's just ignorant. <laughs> Not ignorant, but ignorant. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're the we that stole your segment. Brother Carter that came and brought it to the love of it. You don't like that. I don't like that. You don't, don't like, like that. that. I know I know I'm offending somebody by saying this, and this radio station is not I'm responsible for the words the that love come and out victory of my mouth. Show either. <laughs> but you gotta stop. You gotta stop that. Yeah, yeah. You gotta stop. If, if you're gonna do use social media, use it for some positive. <laughs> yeah. Really, I mean, I stop well, all. Brother Carter, I call those people attention seekers. Okay? No, that's those not are people that are attention seekers. They are not actually wanting any help. They are just wanting attention yeah. from yeah. others. People that get on there and record themselves crying and, th and that kind of thing. And it's not, it's not that we don't care about their mental health, but I feel yeah. like oh. if you really, really needed that. You would seek the right places yes. and put yeah. it on your Facebook timeline is not the way to do it. So yeah. I'm with you on that. 
So you don't like that? You don't like people getting on here crying, Tiffany? Is that what you're saying? We are not responsible for the words that's coming out of Tiffany <laughs> Washington's mouth either. <laughs> call your mama, call, pray, do something. But getting on social media, crying, and that kind of carrying yeah. on, like Brother Carter said, showing yourself in a hospital bed, reach yeah. out to your church members and seek and prayer. I got, I got some home. Some, some, of my, some of my people from from my hometown be doing that and I know y'all <laughs> listen to this and, and that's why they all that's why they don't give you no comments they like you, 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 know, you, why are you, you messing me why, why are you messing us up baby no, well, okay. you know Kanye West can say what he want to say and he get attention for it right, <laughs> right. So, okay let bro call us <laughs> Kanye West can do all that little crazy stuff. I can say something crazy. Ooh, Lord. But I'm gonna be respectful when I see it. You'll be very uh, respectful. Yeah. I'm gonna turn this over to can you help get this back on, I mean, on the track? I feel like what y'all said was so good and it was like right on the money. So mm -hmm. I think I think what I would want people to take away from what I'm about to say. Um, if you don't take anything else away from this segment and you are constantly on social media is that it's not real. Mm, right. Social media is not, not real. real. Mm -hmm. It's not real. It's not real. And and if you're looking to get a real life feeling from watching people on social media, you're going to feel more empty. Mm -hmm. You're going to feel more alone. You're going to feel more frustrated with your life. You're going to mm -hmm. continue to compare your life to other people's lives and mm -hmm. then Believe the lie that yours isn't good enough. Mm -hmm. So I think that social media, like you were saying, should be used as a tool, as a resource. Mm -hmm. It is not therapy. This and and I, it gives us all a platform. Mm -hmm. And I think people take that for granted. Yes. And mm -hmm. your platform, use it, like you said, for something positive. Mm -hmm. Don't use it to tear other people down and stuff right. like that. And somebody needs to create uh, like a social media etiquette book. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. Yes. I think, you know what, since you, you finished that. A Gen Z. It, it, okay. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think that's something that you can take on. <laughs> and I will help market that because you know I'll do whatever I have to do on my day in because I do think that 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 is something that's definitely needed mm -hmm. for that generation because for y'all generation because y'all really do believe in the younger y'all really do believe what they read out there is true and they cannot put their phones down mm -hmm. yeah. so I'm gonna ask you this question and please help me with this if you have someone that is constantly holding their phone in their hand. Mm -hmm. Now I'm talking about helping them mentor. And mm -hmm. they can't do anything without that phone. What advice would you give? How do you get them? Because it's almost like an addiction, right? It is so, an addiction. So how do you, what can you do to help them to start breaking that? I've seen it so bad to where people have like debilitating us uh, separation anxiety from their device mm. where now we um, they have cases on Amazon where you can take the phone into the shower and it's the waterproof. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. like, it's, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. You need to start training yourself and disciplining yourself to just put it away, put mm -hmm. it down. Our attention spans are so short. Mm -hmm. I am guilty of this. I am watching something on Netflix and it is in the background to the TikToks that I'm scrolling and seeing. <laughs> I'm guilty of that. Yes. It's yes. gotten to the point where we, we just need to acquire more discipline to know when to put our phones down because mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are struggling with depression and anxiety. Mm -hmm. It is because they are too, they've become one with their phone. Oh mm -hmm. my God. And, and so not there's a human being. Yes. The touch. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. And we need that. Again, going back to that Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you need that loving, belonging, and that connection. And you can't get that from a device. Oh my God! Did y'all hear that? And you, I would like to add, somebody like it or whatever. That don't mean nothing. you sitting around here wait. I tell you, it's going on to, to, to Tiffany, and then I'm going to come to the to the board. Can I say one last yeah, thing about that? Uh -huh. And just for like the parents who uh, use the devices with their children, yes, please. Go I down. think that I think that that's a wonderful a wonderful tool, and I think that the children should be able to you know play on their iPhone, yep, and uh, play on their tablets and all those things. But studies have shown uh -huh. that um, the younger that you put them in front of those devices, the lighting behind the devices um, it affects their eyesight and uh -huh. how it develops. I had a friend who she had a, a young son and he had been um using his tablet and his device since he was like maybe like 10 months and when he got to like 
one and a half, he was able to scroll and able to, you know, skip um, mm-hmm. ads she and all stuff. That was great. And she mm-hmm. took him to the eye doctor, and the, the doctor said that he needed glasses. And she, he asked him, "How long is he on social media, or not on? How long is he on his device during the day?" Mm-hmm. And she gave him a number, and he said, "Because of that, certain things in his eyes weren't able to develop properly, wow. and now he needs glasses to correct that." Mm-hmm. Wow. He was three, and so he had to have the glasses with the band that went around his whole yes. head. Yes. Oh my God. Wow. Wow. And again, I don't think that the parenting today, under, we didn't have those devices. Yeah. And so now it's become, and I'm going to get back to you guys. I'm sorry, yeah. It's mm-hmm. become a, please understand, and I don't hope I'm not offending anyone. It's become a babysitting tool. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so what is happening, give the kid a, 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 a babysitting tool so I don't have to deal with mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. And really it's affecting them all the way in school mm-hmm. and it's affecting mm-hmm. their social they don't have any verbal they have no so verbal much skill none that they're with... becoming mass shooters absolutely that's true, that that's true. on their devices yes. so much and yes this... yes that's that now that the we didn't have mass adult. shooters when we were coming we, up in school. No, we did not. We had just one I, one Billy Earl that night carried a knife that he he stabbed somebody. Okay, back we're gonna get him. But, he he was doing good. Now see, yeah, he done took it. <laughs> all the way to go. Let me turn this to the other side of the room that has. Okay, I'll be trying uh, to speak some truth to y'all. y'all okay, ain't trying to hear. <laughs> come on, Tiffany, come on in here. I tell you, I, I, go ahead. No, I just wanted to add that far as with the phone, I feel like, too, because everything is on your phone, it's hard to separate yourself. Like far as you don't have to actually get a physical book anymore. You can watch all your movies right on your phone. And I think a good way to separate yourself and even with your children, give them a physical book to read rather than the Kindle. Hey, man. Hey, man. And when you watch Netflix, don't let them watch it on their phone. Actually sit down together as a family, watch it on the TV together. Mm. You know, instead of making the phone teach them how to do certain things, you sit down with them and do it on pencil and paper. Because the thing is, is if if they're associating all of us, if we Mm. associate our phones with our one source of life, I mean, we even have the Bible on our phones. We don't even have to actually physically pick up the word of God anymore because it's on our cell phone. And that right there can become very dangerous. Yeah. And see, you can't can't even remember what a verse is all because you're just That's looking true. at it on your phone, you know. Oh, yes. You, know, you yes. Just can't even remember the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not well, because you have not read it, you oh, know. Exactly. Exactly. But, you know, Tiffany, you're a single mom, right? Okay. Yes, sir. You don't have time to sit down and watch uh next week with your with your children. What do what do you say to that uh, parent, that single mom that just out there just trying to make ends meet and the, the boys or the girl is out there getting have to take care of themselves, you know, because we, when I came up, we had to raise ourselves uh-huh. as young kids. Mom and daddy was at work. So, and and we had a the same the thing. Yeah. They had the same thing today where parents have to be out working and the child is at home mm-hmm. raising themselves. What would you say to that single mom that's out there doing that? I would say you make time for what you love. Mm. We it's make not- time. We make time for everything else. I don't care if you work in mm. two jobs or three. Mm. We we still find time to go here and do that and talk to this person on the phone. And we have time mm. to post on Facebook and Instagram. We got time to keep up with the news. Wow. If you love your children, you will make time. Ain't mm. nothing else needs to be said. There you go. So that good. that was a mic drop. Yeah. It was. Those and are I, the that was a good question, Brother Carter, because for me, even with myself, I found myself, I'm like, okay, Tiffany, I got to find a schedule because I found myself walking around. I don't have enough time to do this with my kids. I don't have enough time for homework. Mm-hmm. I don't have enough time. And then I start really lo- realizing, okay, Tiff, what are you doing with your day when you first come home? You sitting on your phone. That's homework time right there. You mm-hmm. make time for what you love. There is always time. Oh, all right, really Lord, good. but baby, so express good. yourself. All right, <laughs> have a gift. Have a gift. Come out here. Wow. <laughs> you know, earlier we were talking about people, you know, who just spend way too much online, post too much online, and uh, you know, Stephanie, I don't know, you might be familiar with this term, people who are chronically online. Yes, mm. yes, mm. people who just their lives are so invested mm-hmm. in social media, mm-hmm. and. I, it's also created and uh, you know micro celebrities, people who get a little bit of a following, mm-hmm. and then they post 
everything because the TikTok algorithm, in order to really get yourself up there, you got to post three times a day. Oh yeah. my God. So you got to post your breakfast, your lunch, your dinner, getting ready, going to bed. Like you got to post everything. And these people, they let it get into their heads like, oh, I'm this like micro celebrity. I have fans. They get all of their validation and all their self esteem from these people online who they could disappear tomorrow and these people wouldn't notice. Oh my God. Right. They can stop posting for one day and no one's going to notice. That's so And good. these people, like, they, they, they just seek out all this validation so they post more they want more and it's like this yeah. addiction this push and this insatiable pull. hunger yeah and oh i think that can be really dangerous like it can start a career for some people and it could be an awesome opportunity mm -hmm. but i think it can also be incredibly dangerous but i think because yeah. i hear people and, and, and i don't know if you were part of that but i've said this i'm not saying it's anything wrong with social media unless you're using it uh to build a business however it does get to be dangerous when you're building your brand strictly on someone else that you don't see. Because when it takes a dive, mm -hmm. those people that, like you said, they can just leave you at any moment. Yep. What is that going to do to you individually? So yep. that's why you have to have connections with human beings. Absolutely. For me, I, I don't waste my time. When I first started this, the Holy Spirit told me, if you don't get but one like, mm -hmm. if you don't get but one follower, you keep getting up, getting on yep. here because I'm not worrying about how many likes and followers. I know that Same. he put me here. Yep. He put me on this platform. He put us on this platform. The word is getting out. People yep. are being, lives are being changed. Mm -hmm. People are getting, t whether you see it or not. Mm -hmm. So I think we have to get to a point in our life that whether or not someone tells you, likes your comment mm -hmm. or not, you have to know that if you're putting something good out there, yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's going to manifest so itself. There's a lot of people out there that, that's giving up on, yeah. on their dreams, on mm -hmm. life, and, uh, and everything else because they don't see people Liking validating yes. them Absolutely. on social media. So I think social media is more harmful than good i personally. agree i agree i agree with you on that you depend know, on the individual though I, I, yeah. depend on the individual what go ahead go, 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 go. i tell you they go it's all i bet them took over the show it, <laughs> it is the love and victory show with family what name y'all came up with the carter uh, what y'all oh, uh, the, the carter Cruz. Cruz. they done came up they let me tell you i'm a part of that the, <laughs> yes so they have the team has came up with a family people that are a part of the family it's called the Carter Cruise. So everybody that comes in in the morning. So we're going to start saying good morning to the Carter Crew. So right. they came up with that. I love it. So the Carter Crew. Something, something. Go ahead. Just bouncing off what y'all said again, uh, to quote Drake. He, <laughs> he, he said one time, he said, all these followers, but who going to follow me to the end? Oh. Pretty much. Oh, and that's all I got. That's so yeah. good. Oh, did you hear that? Man, I don't know yeah. where his end will be, so I'm not following. <laughs> <laughs> she all but again, that's true. Just if you just think about that, whether it's him, theirs, or ours, we yeah. don't know where somebody's end is gonna. Uh, so you got to be careful who you follow. But I think this goes back to what I said earlier. Y'all have reached the self actualization. Oh. Come on, girl. I'm I'm not there. I will say that. I am not there. And I think most people in our generation, we aren't there because we do sometimes seek that external validation. And we're growing up in a culture where social media is so glorified. It's the mm. biggest idol, in my opinion. Mm. And so it's infiltrated our lives in such a, a rapid way, whether we like it or not. Mm -hmm. I feel like TikTok shoved down our throat. Facebook was shoved down our throat. Uh, Instagram. So it's like we've had to learn how to um, pivot mm -hmm. and accommodate what has been brought to us in regard to social media. Mm -hmm. So I think we've had to digest a lot of a lot more stuff via social media because we we see so much mm -hmm. than maybe our parents did or maybe like you said y'all yeah. would sit down with a pen and a paper. Yes. Whereas no, we sit down and we literally get to have a look into. I think on my Facebook. I don't even get on Facebook, but I have maybe 3,000 friends. Yeah. I don't even know. Who are they? I don't know. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know? But it's you like. You appreciate it, but I, who I are do. they? Yes. Yeah. But it's like we have had to digest so much and we haven't. Information. Yes. And we are on overload. And I think that's where the insecurity comes from because mm -hmm. people feel like if they take a break, then now they're not. Um, Relevant? 
what'd you say? Relevant? Relevant or they're not privy to what is happening in society. So they're like, I have to be on my phone if I'm going to be connected to what's going on. Mm. And it's like, you can remove yourself from social media and still have insight on what's happening in life. Somebody asked me one day, actually, this individual reached out to me wanting to be on the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, she reached out to me Mm -hmm. wanting to be on the show. And then she asked the question, how many followers I have? Or how can she find out how many followers I have? I don't know. Go go look and see. So she she pulled up the site and she pulled up this and she says, Oh, you don't have that many followers. I said, Okay, I'm, I'm confused. And so she and I did say that. She mm-hmm. says, Well, I don't necessarily know if this is gonna be uh, the right show. I said, You're exactly right. Yeah. I said <laughs> it's not gonna be the right show, but I appreciate you reaching out to me mm-hmm. and asking that question because this question is this this show is not about how many followers yeah you know but that Th- that happened to me I was actually preparing to go speak on a panel at an event that I've been preparing for that I made the flyers I posted about it and after I posted it about it on my Instagram the lady came back to me and she said we're actually going to go with someone else because you don't have a big enough following on social media isn't that unbelievable yeah, so- they, they reached out. Your value. They yeah. reached out to me. They from someone referred. And it's like a pretty big name yes. company. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I'm like God's protection. But but that's what it is. And so you say that again. See, God didn't want you to go be a part of no. that mess. And God didn't want that woman to get on here. Absolutely and I not. tell my team to turn and that mic off. <laughs> <laughs> this is the love and victory show sure. with Val. It's not about you, woman. It's that you understand. Yeah. So I, I know right. that you kind of I saw went. people buying followers. You're literally yeah. spending your money, money to look appealing to people who you do not know. It is the most bizarre. We are we are literally in the twilight zone. I was just telling someone, it is so bizarre to me that we are living for people that we have never met and we probably never will meet. Mm-hmm. Wow. And we are wanting them to glorify us or put us on a pedestal. Wow. And we don't even put ourselves there. Mm-hmm. We don't like ourselves. And that's why we're looking for so much love and validation. Mm-hmm. Oh from other people. We're asking them to give us permission to be great. Be permission to be ourselves. It's destructive. Oh my. And I am going to say curtain call. Just with that. Mm, uh, looking I, for love in no, all the wrong places. I think I, we have so many great comments and follow. I, I think we just got a couple of things that popped in. Can you go ahead and read those and then oh my God. Yeah. My God. Yes, yes, I can read those. Diamond, is that your... That's my granddaughter. That's your granddaughter. She doesn't say it out here. She said, just because someone has a large following doesn't mean their page is going to get engagement from their followers. Oh, and that was from my granddaughter. Now, that was some wisdom. Yes. From a 20... Mm -hmm. Who's she, 22 now? Oh, Mm -hmm. Lord. Come on, Diamond. Thank you, baby. And what else we got here? And then Sean is agreeing with everything. Sean Monroe has been agreeing with everything we've been saying. Mm -hmm. Um, regarding like the social media and stuff like that. And I just want to say this. Um, wow. Tiffany, what time is it? It's time for me to wrap it up. It's time Tiffany, to, what's I, the name of this show? The Love and Victory Show. No, I mean the title. <laughs> time to shut our minds. Yeah, it's time, time, yeah. <laughs> when mind, it's time to right shut, now. It's time to <laughs> shut our minds. I want to say this to you guys. I don't know about y'all. But I have absolutely enjoyed Enjoy. this show. Mm-hmm. This has been an amazing yes. show. Mm-hmm. And yes. with that being said, because it's been such an amazing show, <laughs> I want to tell you guys on air, these two ladies, if you want to get more of this candid conversation every third Saturday of the month, you will have Tiffany Washington and Steph. Steph, my Stephanie yes. will be on, in studio. So whether mm-hmm. by streaming live or in studio, but I want you in no, studio. Tiffany, Tiffany is gonna make her way down. Tiffany is not gonna, gonna make her. Come on, Tiffany down. is not gonna she miss gonna another make, one. She gonna make no, her I'm way not. down. Here. Yes. So <laughs> I gotta meet her in person. The reason yes, the, Holy, definitely have to meet. the Holy Spirit has uh, touched my heart, and He touched my heart. Uh, with both of these young ladies because they are of a generation mm-hmm. that is definitely in need of this candid conversation. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think our generation mm-hmm. is in need of hearing from you all. 
And I think with us, at least once a month, we, we can't just have from a man's perspective. Right. Why can't we have it from a lady's right. perspective? So too? do I need not have to show up on the third Brother one? Carter, oh, this okay. is the Love and Victory show with Val. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is, you are Brother Carter. You are my co-host. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what makes you the think people need the you. people need you? They need us together. The manner okay. that you give yes. us. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. uh, that girl said the matter. The manner. The manner. The manner. Uh, you, you speak the from, bread from, from heaven. Did, yeah. from heaven. Come on. Did, you, did you hear what she said? <laughs> my sanctified Come on, yes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So I thank you guys so much. Uh, Tiffany had just left the stage for a second. She, uh, there she go. Tiffany, you know I'm petty. We have another event. Uh, I know. I have, gonna... I'm going to tell them about that. So okay, I have an event. Uh, the BK Consultant Group is uh, one of the sponsors over at an expo in Cyprus. So my team is already there over at the Barry Center. I the know other half of the team. The Shout other out half, to the other half, half of the team. team. Huh? So they, Who's out there? Yes, yes. So uh, VK Consultant Group, I want to give a big shout out to Ebony, to Lawrence, to uh, Aaron, and to uh, Christian. Uh, Christian and Sophia. Thank you guys for mm -hmm. holding it down for us uh, as we make way to get there. Mm -hmm. And then after we leave there, Brother Carter and I, uh, 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 Brother Carter and I are going to go spend a little time because it's his birthday uh, on the 18th and it's our anniversary on the 19th. So we're going to go. Uh, she bamboozled me. <laughs> uh, uh, no, I've I been did, hooked me. No, I <laughs> did not bamboozle you. You chose the date. So, you know, he get a birthday, I get an anniversary. So, hey, he want to get a gift, I get a get gift. A gift. <laughs> Win -win. Get win -win. So I didn't choose the date. Every time you say that, he chose the date when he decided to marry me. So mm -hmm. we're going to take some time to fall off and go enjoy. And I want to say to you guys, to my wonderful listeners, mm -hmm. uh, those that are bold enough to come on here and give your comments and to show that your faces, I'm so grateful to God for you. But I'm even, even grateful to the ones that don't, because I know that you're still walking away with something positive. Always share with us what you want us to talk about, what you want to hear. We want to hear the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, as uh, Steph said earlier today, I'm okay with myself. So yeah. give me the bad. If it's something I need to take to learn from it, yep. I'm going to learn from it. Give me the good. Uh, let me know that we are doing what we're supposed to do. And if I don't hear from you, we're just going to keep doing what God has called us God to do. God bless you. So, yeah. God bless you uh, anyway. again, the Love and Victory Anyhow. Show, Anyhow. every Saturday morning, you can find us from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. on Raise the Raise 100. Or you can just go to, uh, how do they find us? Uh, they how do they find us? They can find us on YouTube and Facebook. Okay, YouTube, Facebook, and, okay, there you go. How do they find us? They just go on uh, YouTube yeah. and Facebook and you do what? Just say, I want, how do I find love? How do they find us? If you go on YouTube and Facebook and you type in the Love and Victory Show with Val, it should pop right up. Oh. We we post all of our our uh, events ahead of time, so uh -huh. you should be able to tune in before we even go live. Mm -hmm. Okay, and yes. afterwards, and afterwards, and yeah. again, uh, we also have a podcast. Uh, we don't do much talking about that on Raise the Praise or on this uh, show, but I want to start letting you guys know. Go over, pop over to our podcast because we also have some good uh, commentary that's going on on over there. Mm -hmm. You can find everything related to the radio and podcast on lvwithval.com. Mm -hmm. That'll have all of our updated episodes and everything like that. Amen. And my granddaughter just do not want to get off of here. She said something and then she popped in and she popped out. Mm -hmm. What she said? But I she love. Said, she said real people having real and candid conversations. The best show, regardless of how many followers you have. Much love always. Oh, wow. There you go. And that is how I'm going to end this. Thank you, Tiffany. Before I go, Tiffany, is there anything you want to say to the people or leave them with? Yes, this was an amazing episode. I love this conversation, meeting Stephanie. Uh, this was this really blessed my soul today. And I'm always excited and ecstatic to be a part of the show. All righty, then. Mm -hmm. And Miss Stephanie. Likewise, um, ditto. It was a pleasure meeting you too, Tiff. And I keep calling you Tiff. You can call me Steph. It just <laughs> felt right. <Yeah. laughs> I can't I like wait to meet you. <laughs> there you go. I'm looking forward to meeting you in person, but thank you all for having me in person. Yes. Thank you to the Carter crew um, for being so gracious. Um, and I guess if I just left everyone with the, uh, a nugget, 
um, just weigh the pros and the cons of uh, keeping your mouth shut um, during a time where maybe it's best to assert yourself and stand up for yourself and say something. Hmm. And how can they find you? Yes, you can find me on all social media platforms <laughs> um, at official Stephanie Alexis. Um, and yes, I have, can I share two, yes, I have two I have, books on Amazon. You, um, you can find those um, five star reviews, love oh. reviews. One is a 30 day healing devotional. It's called Chronicles of a Caring God, Healing for Hurting Hearts. Um, and then the second is a book uh, more recent is called 100 Dates with Jesus. Oh. And it's 100 unconventional dates for you to go on with him to strengthen your relationship. And yeah. when she comes back on, on the third Saturday in November. Uh, November, we will have those books out here so y'all can see. And yes. then we will also put them on the website so you can just click and go right to Amazon and purchase. Yeah. All righty yeah. then. Yeah. We yeah. absolutely love you. And until then. Hold on, hold on. Oh, Brother yeah, Carter, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm I'm, 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 here before I say my little okay, say I'm so sorry. <laughs> say your say so. Yeah. Please forgive me. You know, I, I enjoyed the show myself personally. Uh, every battle hmm. does not have to be fought. Oh. I'm going to say that one more time. Every battle does not have to be fought. And that's the time you just need to be silent. Oh. I just also want to say October the 18th, it's my birthday. <laughs> Give me some shout out for my birthday. <laughs> I turned 61 October the 18th. And I want to say congratulations to my beautiful wife and myself. On the 19th of October, we'll be married for 32 years. That's 32 wow. years yeah. in holy matrimony okay, so on October the 19th. So it's been a joyful ride with you thus far and i hope we have 32 more and i'm going on and well on and it's on. been 40 some years so I'm it does but, but i'm matrimony. saying no i'm saying if i'm holding on to you i've been holding on for 40 something years so 32 i think we can get another 32 yeah. in there that's yeah. all so i'm saying we actually been to we actually been together since 78 which is like 44 years mm -hmm. back mm -hmm. yes and so that's our right. official date and i know you don't know but i know was May the 15th, 1978. Oh my gosh, I'm oh. melting. Yes, yes, my child. So I guess I was saying that if we can hang around that long, we can hang around for another 30 right. years. Well, so I pleasure. love you. I love everybody. And thank you until next time. Tell the people bye. Y'all wait bye-bye.